snap around here. I think it's a new face. Yeah. Who they? Who they? They're not from around here. It's gotta be my imagination. I think it's a new face. I think it's a new face. I think it's a new face. Man, they not from around here. I think it's a new face. So I'm not rushing, spaced out swag, best believe I'm paper touching, super stupid flow, and you bitches can't tell them nothing, UFO, uniquely flying, outstanding, all I speak is cash, I see why you don't understand, UFO, uniquely flying, outstanding, all I speak is cash, I see why you don't understand me, got a sense for drama, so I always keep the cannon, this is the invasion, so watch out for our landing, standing, Tall, never too far. Spring and summer fashion, bro. I get it in the fall. Y'all about to start hating, and I don't mind at all. I'm a thriller like MJ, and my flow is off the wall. Who they? Who they? They're not from around. It's gotta be my imagination. I think it's a new face. I think it's a new face. I think it's a new face. They not from around here. I think it's a new face. Who they? Who they? Gotta be my imagination. I think it's a new face. I think it's a new face. I think it's a new face. Man, they not from around here. I think it's a new face. Greetings, Earthlings. I am Wallow. I am Wallow. I am Wallow. I live life like there's no tomorrow. Chris King K G N O O B. What homes you ain't know? We're U F O. Cargo khakis, polos, and fresh kicks. That's the definition of what the cargo kids is. S O S, yes, spaced out swagger. I never do anything right. I'm backwards. I'm so galactic, so erratic. You niggas on my old swag, you can have it. The world is mine, and your girl is too. So do us a favor, make room for the crew. Wow. Who that? Who that? It's gotta be my imagination. I think it's a new face. I think it's a new face. I think it's a new face. They not from around here. I think it's a new face. Who they? Who they? They not from around here. It's gotta be my imagination. I think it's a new face. I think it's a new face. I think it's a new face. Man, they not from around here. I think it's a new face. Earthlings, this 
is my introduction They say greatness doesn't come overnight So I'm not rushing Spaced out swag Best believe I'm paper touching Super stupid flow And you bitches can't tell them nothing UFO Uniquely flying outstanding All I speak is cash I see why you don't UFO, uniquely flying outstanding All I speak is cash, I see why you don't understand me Got a sense for drama, so I always keep the cannon This is the Hi guys Welcome back to the Who That Podcast The livest podcast this side of the Mississippi and the Nile River I am B How you doing? Nice to see me again I know Um with me, as always, we have uh, the captain, uh, a.k.a. Captain Crunch, Mario. <laughs> captain Crunch. <laughs> How y'all doing today? And our guest for this week, I am very fortunate, very happy to tell you all, is one of the most talented musicians and coolest people all around. Just fucking great guy. He's going to be at the Shut Up and Ink that's uh, coming next weekend. Damien Boggs. If you don't know the man, then better get acquainted real fast. This dude is extremely fucking talented. Thank you for being on the on the spaceship with us, man. Absolutely, man. I'm ready to enjoy the ride. Man, it's it's gonna be pretty fucking fun. I have a, I have a feeling it will. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're laid back as shit. But Demario, what's Paco, up? What's up? How your week been, man? Uh, it's uh, it's been busy. I started a new job. You know, the feeling of starting over. A new job, you know, you gotta. You're learning things you already know. You're yeah. playing. You're playing the two truths and a lie. Yeah. It's it's exhausting in its own. It's like, hey, you know, I kind of wish I could just step onto the floor and go to work. You know, right? I, I know this. I don't. You just gotta play the waiting game. Yeah, and then you know, you're you're with this training group, and I've got a really like a really nice group of people I'm with, but you know. You know, eventually you're going to get on the floor. You're not going to be as close as you were with the training group. It's right. always like that. Every always. every job you're at. Yeah. So, you know, it's just it's the song and dance. Again. That's just a part of it all. Yeah, but, uh, but life is good. You That's know, I got, um, got a boo thing at the house. She's cool. Kids <laughs> like her. At boo thing. <laughs> we did a, a family movie day where... We watched the new Lion King. I I hadn't seen it yet. It was dope. What do you, you you like it? Yeah, I mean it is what it is. You it know, it is what it is. It's not gonna be that Better huge animated. animated. You know, it's not gonna be. They just like, went, they went a little too Animal Planet. You think so? Just just a little. It too needed animal. a little a little bit more imagination. Uh, just you know, any little less reality. All realistic. Yeah, I yeah. just can't wait to be king. He couldn't stand on like a zebra's back. Yeah, right, right, zebra. right, right. That's all. That's yeah. all I wanted. So, so what? How did you feel um, about? I guess let's say the CGI in it. Like it, it says live action, but it's not live action. It's not. No. It's so not. it's not. You know, I know that's an old title to talk about. New title. No. Um, I watched Dolomite. Is it on Netflix? It's on there. Like. Oh. Yes, it's good. Have you seen the new Dolomite yet? No, but I don't I want to know tonight. See it. Yeah. <laughs> drive, nigga, drive. Oh, <laughs> that shit cracked me up. I, I gotta know. see it. Yeah, man. it was good. It was some good shit. Because you know, Eddie Murphy, Wesley Snipes, uh, uh, who, uh, Peels in it. Uh, yeah, thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah, gosh, who? It, there's a there's a ton of names in it. Like everybody that's currently a working black actor in Hollywood, but right? Is now. it a reimagination? No, reimagination? What, what are we it is a backstory of oh, how the, making so of kind the of a prequel. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. And, it, and it, is it wrong that somebody looks like me loves black exploitation films? No, hell freaking, no. Like I'm gonna get you, sucker. Is one of the greatest films. I've oh ever yes, watched. <laughs> <laughs> amazing. That's a, or uh, the Last Dragon. Fantastic. Come on. Oh. Now. Oh, Come show on now. Show no. I just watched The Last Man, Dragon two got, days ago. Bro. I got the glow the other day. Yeah. <laughs> it was beer, but I got the glow. Yeah, but it's still glowing. <laughs> yeah. It was glowing, though. Bruce Leroy. Yes. That was, it was good stuff, man. Vanity got on my damn nerves. Yeah. Right? Man, just, thank you. Like, she was aptly named, though. Yes. She, was. she loves some vanity. Yes. yes. I can't deal with those people. I can't, man. And my only thing is... 
she kept getting captioned like, "You're not even trying to help me out here." Like, bitch, you see, I'm fighting. Like, it's can so... you struggle a little bit? Can you yeah. fight? <laughs> like, Kidnapper's <laughs> dream, right there. You Kidnapper's I mean? dream. Like, That's what her name should get have back been. to the house and be surprised. Like that went amazingly well. Like, right. like guys, we have found our niche. We're amazing at kidnapping. <laughs> you know, she's just really bad about not being kidnapped. <laughs> exactly. Wow. That shit yeah. It shouldn't be. Vanity should not be your name. It should be like like easy hostage. Yeah, right. Easy hostage. Or she could be uh, uh, Princess Peach on Mario captured, oh what, yeah. ten one. times? Yeah. <laughs> Mario yeah. should have just left her be. At, the, at, at some point, she's running off. Yeah, like she's not getting kidnapped all these times, man. It's a setup. It's a, it's setup. a setup. How many weird, it's a setup. How many weird like otherworldly beings you got to kill to be with somebody that ungrateful? You know, right. you know what I mean. You show them, she's like, oh, cool, cool. thank you. And you're like, give me them fireballs back. Yeah, <laughs> roast you. The Roasted roast peaches go this. great with this whiskey. You right, know? right. Have y'all ever seen that movie uh, Five Heartbeats? Yes. All right, I so, that so you know um, when they play the little that little trick, uh, the, the the shy boy, and they leave off with the girl, and then the, the boyfriend to the girl comes in. Every night I gotta prove my love. Yeah, oh, that's, yes, that's yes. that Temptations. Yeah, one. yeah, yeah, man, yeah. 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 Like Is it Leon moment, in that? Is Leon? Like, in yeah, that? from Cool Runnings. Yeah, <laughs> he said from Cool Runnings. <laughs> oh, come on, man, that was a big hit for him. Yeah, man. yeah. <laughs> Where's Jamaican accents ever? Yes. And what was the old boy in there? Um, cool not John Candy. No, was it? No. no, it was it was uh, John Candy. It was Leon. And what's his name? Uh, Dougie Doug was in it too. Yes, though, yes. He was a push car driver. <laughs> I Cool Runnings was one of those movies well, I, I watched as a kid, and like I didn't get it. As a oh, kid, really? but yeah, well, as a little kid, you oh, know. Okay. Yeah, I remember I was a little kid when that came out, yeah. but there was some weed humor in it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I get it now, you know. Why did I have to go back and watch it though? You know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, that's an hour and fourteen minutes you don't get back. Right, right? my kids love watching Good Burger, and every time <laughs> I just die a little on the inside. Like, yeah, it was cool. When it was, you know, it is what it is. My but son just got introduced to Good Burger. Oh, you better be ready. And he he finds it amazing. Yes, oh, it is. He fucking just, loves it. He had, the way he answers the phone, like, he'll be like, "Daddy, like, what's up, man? Welcome to Good Burger." Uh, like, okay, all right. Okay. <laughs> I get it. Okay. I get it. I get it. I know. I was there when they came out with it. I was there. Yeah, I, 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 was, there. I was there. I lived through that already. I wonder if they ever sold any Good Burger uniforms. Definitely. Like, Definitely. We should look that shit up. I guarantee it's we, Halloween's next, Thursday, man. Amazon Prime. I yeah. think I see something in your future, man. Hell yeah. oh, what are you going to go for Halloween? What are you going to be for Halloween? You dressing up or not? I had no plans. Oh, I, I'm going to rock it this year. Uh oh. What did you get? I'm rushing it. It's simple yet elegant. Okay. Yeah. So I am going to have a white t shirt with the word life written on it. Uh-huh. And I'm going to walk around handing out lemons. Wow. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 And if you don't get it, I'm going to throw the lemon at you because you're dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Last year, I was a fat ass Donald Trump. And I threw. So Donald Trump. <laughs> I threw, uh, yeah, right? <laughs> I threw paper towels at people. I went for Just yeah, I, you, I got pictures of me on Facebook like this. <laughs> It was a wonderful. He thought he was like the Oprah of paper towels. Yeah. You get a roll. Oh, you, you get, get a roll. roll. Everybody's like, "You got some food?" He's like, "Nope." Whoop. Roll. Yeah, if you boil paper these, towels. they barely taste like chemicals. Yeah. You know? I got paper towels. I heard you guys were wet. Yeah. <laughs> it better have been bouncy, man. I need that quicker picker up. Right, right. 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 <laughs> Me, I just went. I racked up on. A bunch of dollar rolls from the dollar store. I was like, mm, I dropped some, forty on it. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking for them weak old that. lemons too. Right, right. Weak old lemons. <laughs> yeah, I'm not trying to give you no fresh lemon. Right. I just zested on somebody. Right, just, right, right. You know? <laughs> when life gives you lemon zest. You better make chicken orzo soup. Right. <laughs> So what else we got on the list today? What we um the strike is over. Strike is over, the y'all. UAW. GM strike has come to an official end. Yeah. Everybody gets to make money again. Yeah, go back to work. Everybody gets to make money. I heart yeah, Spring yeah. Hill. Y'all can stop yelling at the picketers. <laughs> Rest in peace to the man that uh, passed away. His Go name on. was Roy. I don't remember his last name. Roy? Yes. I didn't know the. Rest I just read it. Yeah, it's a guy named Roy. If anybody that's watching, if y'all know his name, please put it in the comments. Yes, please do but, that. 
Um, we start back. That's why I don't have anything planned for Halloween because I'm going to be working 12 hours a day, seven oh, days a week. So gosh. I figure I get off work. I'm just going to go to sleep. And yeah. There's no Halloween. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go as a shaggy a black shaggy not shaggy from scooby-doo not you oh. know it wasn't me whatever the yeah, fuck that's not that shaggy no yeah. no 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 and uh she's gonna do velma oh nice a black shaggy that black shaggy it's funny because my daughter's name is daphne yeah and she <laughs> loves scooby-doo and she's like did you name me i was like no no, no. We, we, we named you after the wood nymph from greek mythology because right, right. We're, nerds. <laughs> we're nerds all right we play D and D, okay? <laughs> well, not so much that. Just like we read way too much. Oh yeah, which is why we don't lose arguments. Okay, uh, all right. It's nice yeah. though. Well, no, her like because her mother. It, it's crazy. Her her mother's sister is named Lorianne, and uh, mm. Lorianne's husband is named Steve. And Steve, um, in in one of the dialects, would translate into crowned one, and uh, Lorianne. Uh, it's like a crown of laurels. Oh, and then the crown. Well, Daphne's father in Greek mythology, to keep her from the goddess Apollo, who coveted her, she was a wood nymph, mm-hmm. turned her into a laurel. Hmm. So oh. and there's a whole family tie-in sort of oh, thing. Oh wow! And so we're like, mm, boom, because she came really, really close wow. to being named Juniper. But, Juniper. But my last name being Boggs, B-O-G-G-S. Mm-hmm. And if she's Juniper, she's going to be called June. And June Boggs, she's going to end up being June Bug, man. And, like, <laughs> here's the thing, like, I have good tendencies. And, like, I know a bunch of June Bugs and ain't none of them worth the damn. No, so June I'm not Bug. trying to, like, you know what I mean? Because we all know so I'm not going to put that on you. Everybody know Peanut, Lil' Bit, <laughs> yeah. June Bug. Pookie. 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 Well, always Ray Ray. And Ray Ray's always the dumbest one you know. <laughs> Ray Ray's the one you send to get Laffy Taffy's come back with now and later. So, yes, yeah. yes. Like, Ray Ray, he's like, what? No. <laughs> He, he always gives no, you something that's a dollar you. cheaper than what you ordered. Yeah, and he keeps the dollar. Too. Keeps the dollar. <laughs> Ray Ray might not can read, but he can make a dollar. Yeah, he can do <laughs> math. He can do math it, like a motherfucker. Probably be your dollar. You ain't. Yeah, you ain't it, it is your dollar. I gave him the money. <laughs> yeah. I said, I said, go ahead and get you a fresca, man. Yeah. What's a fresca? Right. <laughs> a fresca? I'm, I'm gonna get the thing as a dollar cheaper. Yeah. <laughs> he made two dollars to go to the grocery. Right. Hey, that's the way they do it too. Damn, Ray Ray. Every time Damn, Ray they got an excuse for all of it. Too. We need a t-shirt that said, damn, Ray Ray. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I think right. Bruh Man off Martin, his name was probably Ray Ray. Yeah, mm-hmm. hey, Bruh Man could have had his own show, though. Bruh there should have been a spinoff. Yeah. yeah. There should have been. been a spinoff. For yes. sure. Bruh Man. Yes. They talked about rebooting Martin, though. I don't know if How they're going to do it. Gina don't look like Gina. I, mm, Gina. I saw Gina on uh, I know, I Empire, and she wasn't looking terrible. Gina's on Empire? Gina's on Empire. She's in like a it's the final like season. a bootleg, a bootleg uh, SWV type group. You know what I mean? Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. SWV was... Dope, uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, 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 for sure. These people sleep on nineties R and B so hard they don't even get it. <sighs> they, you seen the meme? They said the reason we had and silk and Vogue. Yes. No, I go way deep, man. And if you don't love one twelve, one twelve was so PJ's cold, man. Green. No, I was young. I knew all the words. Oh I didn't know God. what pieces and cream really meant. Yeah, I had no, no idea. Too, that, and they had innuendo back then. They yeah, did. it wasn't directly. Just... Dude, we're very bold now. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, no. I mean, it's not. But that's and not. Cream. But that's not cute, man. Yeah, because that game just... doesn't really. That doesn't. That's not game that lasts. That might close the evening for you. Mm-hmm. But you ain't gonna end up with somebody you want to be with more than like three nights. Exactly. Right. You yeah, know what right. I mean, right. you need somebody that can mentally stimulate you, and that's what. I love about old school R&B, and I'm talking like old school. Like we can go back to Reverend Al Green, Come on. Teddy Pendergrass. Like we can walk it all the way. Johnny Taylor. Let's like let's go old school soul stuff. It was, it wasn't just so in your face, man. Right. It was real communication, real music, right. real conversation. And it was clever. Sometimes yeah. it was funny, but it was always genuine and had like this it honesty really thing to it. It, re- it really was. Lenny Williams. Oh, oh. I love you. It's That's still it. one of the most dynamic songs ever recorded to me that, it's just and can we talk about the way the snare and bass work on that song because it just it, 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 it just carries sits you in it. that pocket and just the whole thing is a tidal wave of emotion <laughs> oh it's so good yeah. yeah the only time it stops is when you just oh oh oh, 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 oh. <laughs> man and then they carry that out right in that refrain oh not even fair man Go look up uh, Lenny Williams, everybody, if you don't. 
know what we're talking about. Yeah, and put it on your playlist when, like, you want to, like, go order the dessert for her. Yeah, yeah. Order the dessert, grab a couple of espresso, take a walk around the block. And when you get in the car, you pop that Lenny Williams in. Oh. Put clothes with the Lenny Williams. But, you know, start off. Like, you're not going to go wrong with Otis Redding Live in Europe, 1966. Start with a couple tracks off of that. Then go right into, there's a couple of really great Marvin Gaye tracks on his album that they released after he passed away, which is huge, orchestrated, lots of strings. It's his favorite album he made. So it's really emotive. And you go into that. And then from there... You know, dude, like turn down the lights by some mm-hmm. Teddy Pendergrass, on, huh? and then lay yeah. into that Lenny Williams. And then, <laughs> if you want to modernize it a little bit because you feel like, oh, it's getting sleepy and a little tired, mm-hmm. and I feel like I should be wearing bell bottoms. John Rich, throw, throw it, in, John B. No, throw it into John, John B. John B. Throw it into John B. <laughs> yeah. 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 Don't know you gonna hit it with the date. Yeah. Don't know. Oh. They don't know about what the people say. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. don't yeah. know about what <laughs> you and me. You're closing the deal on that. Yep. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. Closing yeah. the deal. Your mind cause it's jealousy. <laughs> they don't know about this. Here. That's perfect. Dude, that's, and the thing was, every same way as like, there's a couple of artists when you're like this is amazing and then you get the record and you're like that's a white dude yeah, <laughs> like, right, that dude scared right. the crap out Yo, of me man it's like John what? B John B is the least likely white dude at the party no Bobby Caldwell Bobby Caldwell that he's Bobby number Caldwell. one Bobby Caldwell Bobby took Caldwell, that Bobby Caldwell man yes I but, didn't oh. find out Bobby yeah, Caldwell was white until I was grown <laughs> you know, dude. Yeah, yeah. I love yeah. everything and that dude plays Bobby every instrument love. yeah every instrument yeah um, like that dude is a beast right I but here's the problem. All, it's, the, all those instruments it, too. It's a weird thing. You grow up around grown folks' music, and you make grown folks music. Right. And right. the thing is, music is that is is that one area right now, especially given our social and economic structure, where music is still that one place where color blindness can exist. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Where it mm-hmm. does. Where it does. Where it's an arena where it's okay. Mm-hmm. I think art in general, maybe. I think music is being a little bit too. Um, you know, it's been a, a little bit too narrow, but art right. in general, like, cause it doesn't matter cause it affects you on a real emotional level. Right. Cause we're all just people, you know what I mean? And and that's a place where we get to just be people and it doesn't matter about the way you look or, right. or like you where you grew up people. or even necessarily who you voted for, though that's kind of a problem. Right. If you go to a festival, <laughs> man, you, that's the most. You hear, yes, connected. it's the most eclectic yes. group of people and there's so many different types of people that are there for the same thing mm-hmm. to be moved emotionally and spiritually by music and, um, and I think art's the same way. I think mm-hmm. I, I think art in, in all of the different mediums is the same way. Right. Photography has been blowing my mind lately because uh, there's just these local photographers and um, that that I've been seeing doing work that like I didn't expect to see. Right. So g- give me an example because we, me and him, both are photographers. So you're well, right. Well, honestly, and it's people who are a little bit newer to the game. Yeah, for, yeah, yeah. For me, like. Um, because I, like, because I play music, so I need a lot of promotional material. Right, and um, it's it's a lot easier for me to put something out if I I'm not gonna sit around and snap pictures with my phone because right. a it's not professional, it doesn't look good, right. and I don't want to put an image out there that doesn't reflect what I do musically, which right. I try to be as professional as I can. Right, uh, with with what I do artistically, so I'd right. like my promotional materials to reflect that. Right. Um, I did a shoot with somebody who is my next door neighbor that is, and I, I don't think she would take offense to knowing it, but I, I think she is still a newbie in a lot of ways. It's not like she's been doing photo shoots and been doing stuff for 10, 20 years. Right. She's still newer at it. Yeah. But the stuff that she produced, just the previews I saw, and then she shot my friend's, our, our mutual friend's wedding. Mm. Um, and then a, another friend of ours that we work with did her the family shoot, and then I saw a few other things. And it's literally this person leveled up so freaking fast you thought they bought a book of cheat codes. Oh wow! And yeah. it's it's amazing to see that. And yeah. it's uh, uh, do you know Meredith Joy? I don't, but uh, I'll check singer it out. songwriter like uh, she does her ta- her um, photography is called Tatted Cat. Really? She's like basically she's like a twenty two year old twenty three old cat lady. Right, right, uh, right. But she's <laughs> covered lady. in really nice tattoos, but right, she's like right. an amazing singer, great songwriter, um, but is 
gotten into the loves photography has gotten into the game has invested in it right done the work done the time she's done a lot of like do you know sarah gillum yes so she's worked with sarah like taking sarah's like, really learning and right, putting right. in the time but to see somebody level up that quick right like, like from where i know she started to like the stuff i'm seeing her put out now it's just like damn right like mm-hmm. that's a really cool thing to see and um just there, there's a, a couple other local photographers that are like fledgling, you know, early right, into it. Right, right, right. Mm-hmm. And I, I think a lot of that comes with they're taking chances. They're taking chances, but they're not putting out their mistakes, mm. which I think is really cool. Right. Yeah. I think they're seeing right. the things that work and that, uh, that that speak and kind of jump off of the screen, you know, now that we're in the age of digital photography as opposed right. to film. Right. Because there, there are people that I look at that mm. still do film that I'm just so floored by AJ Dude, I Holmes. Still, I miss film. I wish film was still like with like what AJ does with film. AJ took some photos of me that that wrecked me because mm-hmm. I was like, I don't like looking that vulnerable. Mm. I like feeling that vulnerable, but I don't want you to save it in amber, right? Ever, but it's gene. It like it's really brilliant work. I think he does amazing work. Um, Ross has done some stuff digitally that I really like. We right. all love Ross James. Ross yeah. does a great job. Ross um, is good. Um, I, I was a. Um, a frat brother to Ross. We were mm-hmm. really close. And it's so weird because, like, Ross does a lot of political and formal things, and I do a lot of informal things, so we're kind of like a yin and yang for what we do. We're well, opposite sides of the same coin. Right. You both do what you do. A lot of people wouldn't know that, you know, we're as cool as we are and stuff, so, yeah, I got a lot of respect for Ross, so. But I just I just love that art is that, that one place, because for, for someone like me who is constantly seeking connection with people like whether it's through music whether it's through the paintings i do whether it's through uh the food that i cook because right. as mm-hmm. a cook whatever it's through whether it's just through conversation i i'm always been with somebody who looks inherently for connection instead of reasons to not be involved with someone right. on any sort of basis i i want to what's your deal what are you into right where do we have a commonality i think uh, you know Contrary to what the media wants to put out there, I think most people are actually like that. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, we're, yeah. we're being divided and conquered as a nation right now. Mm-hmm. And I think it's up to, for for once in the, in this young nation's history, I think it's, you know, since, what, the, the 60s, it's up to the artists to save us again. Right, for real. To, to point the, the light on it and put us in the right direction <laughs> and tell us, hey, guess what? We're all human beings. We're all people. And we deserve to be treated like human beings and right, like exactly. people. I don't care what you look like. I don't care where you came from. I don't, I don't care who you love. No. I don't right. care. I just, mm-hmm. let's just be people and be, and, and like with that's, the strike thing, just, like oh. it doesn't even matter what side you landed on with that. If you can't give support to somebody standing up for their perceived value as a human being, I do tend to question that a little bit. Right. And it's like, again, I'm not a member of a union. I don't work in a field where that's even an option. But my understanding is these people are standing up for their perceived value as human beings and as employees and as workers right. to not at least show them the respect that, that they deserve, I, mm-hmm. I think is short-sighted. Right. So I, I think that as an artist, there's, but there's also, as an artist, you look at them, oh, there's opportunity to create there because that's an idea. It's a kernel. It's a spark. It's a little idea. And mm-hmm. I know you guys as photographers and as videographers and as uh, you guys make content. Right. right. So there's stuff there for you, too. And I think, you know, yeah. with, with the way that I create, I see it, too. I just think, uh, like, it's a really cool time to be alive. It's right. a really cool time it's, to be alive because we can create things that whatever. maybe other generations couldn't. We can do whatever we want. We can. But there's also a responsibility that comes with that. And that's create good work. Because yeah. there's a lot of trash being created because anybody can put anything out. Yes. So if you want to be an artist, like create good work. If you, it, you We quality. have to create quality work. Yes. Right. And that's why I was like so excited. like And, and a little bit taken aback. You know what I mean? Because I'm, I'm a little bit older than some of these these younger artists and seeing somebody like, like Meredith and seeing people like Cassandra Coleman and seeing these people so quickly le- level up and produce right. great work. I'm, I'm floored by that. And I think it's, but I think it's awesome. Yeah. Right. It's gonna because it makes somebody up. like me who's been in the game a lot longer going, 
it's the it, it's never game over. Well, yeah. We're in the information age, and it's a lot of people over. don't utilize that. They well, if you're uneducated, you're lazy. Yeah, yeah, there it is. If you're uneducated at this point in time, you're lazy. you don't want to do the work. You're lazy, right? Lazy. right. And I'm not Absolutely. being mean, but like, it's just a, it's if too you easy. don't know something, we all have computers in our pockets. You yes. have you have <laughs> more information in your pocket right now than the world has had than the world available. has had in the previous. Uh, 20 years previous to today, you have more information. You have the access to more information than anyone has ever had in the history of civilization. Mm-hmm. Right, exactly. And you're not building pyramids. Oh, you, oh, so you I'm don't not speak impressed. Spanish? Yeah, you just go. If, <laughs> not, not if you don't pyramids. speak Spanish, they have. you don't even have to learn Spanish. They have an app that a motherfucker in Spanish can talk to you in Spanish. It'll translate it into English, and you can speak into English, and it'll translate them back to Spanish. Yeah, like, so you can do that, but also like. Learn Spanish. Learn yeah. Spanish. Yeah. Like the thing, you have Babel. You can download an app, and you can learn Spanish with Babbel. If, oh, I don't like to read, it makes me tired. You have Audible. There are so many ways to give yourself information, education, and to never put yourself in a conversation where you're out of your depth. Right. And isn't that what we all want? Right. Don't you want to be able to walk into a room of people who don't look like you, don't come from where you came from, and still be able to hold and a not, conversation? To be able to hold a conversation, be able to add something, but also be able to listen to something, ingest it, Right. Digest it with empathy mm-hmm. and then reply mm-hmm. in a way that is socially acceptable and has something to add. Because if you're not moving the narrative and the story along, what are you doing? Yeah. That's, and that's if, it. For mm-hmm. any reason, if it's not to learn about other cultures for any other reason, do it for the food. Man, them cultures be coming with some amazing... Uh, <laughs> huh, bro. Like, yes. I like where your head's at because really all I, all I want to do... I. I was telling you this earlier. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to do anything that I don't want to do anymore for money. Right. I'm not. Right. So I've, I, I've literally in the last year decided I'm going to monetize my passions. What I'm going to do for work, for my day job, I, I play music and that is my job. That is right. my vocation. That is what I am. I'm a musician. I'm an artist. Right. So I do that and I'm paid for it. The only other thing I'm willing to do is to cook amazing food. And right. I am, I am lucky that I work for an owner that owns two places that allows me to do just that. Yeah. So I make great food. I make great drinks. I sing sad songs. They give me money. I'm winning. Yeah, you live in the dream. Live in the dream. Tiger blood. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Got some LSU tiger blood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know Charlie Sheen tiger blood. That's yes. not in the hospital. <laughs> not yeah. the Charlie Sheen. The Charlie Sheen tiger blood will give you a fever blister. <laughs> I went and saw Charlie Sheen in Atlanta. I caught that that little tour he did. I had to catch it. Well, it's a once in a lifetime thing. Yeah, I was pretty but, sure he was gonna check out soon, but he didn't. He's still kicking, man. Still dude, that, that dude literally lives by the no risk. Get no biscuit philosophy. Right, right. <laughs> He's living on the edge. I thought I was a daredevil. No, I am not. No, I am not. I'm no. like a triple A member compared to that. Dude. Right, right. This so, man has clearly has things to lose and doesn't give me one. Yeah, give a Geronimo was like, that's a wild dude. Yeah. <laughs> wild. That dude's wild. Yeah. So, <laughs> oh, hey, go real ahead. quick, because uh, you mentioned in your in your profession, you don't have the uh, the option to for a union. Um, well, there, there are, there right. are, the there are musician awesome. unions and right. yes, absolutely. But with, with what I do, it's a little, uh, counterproductive and it's, it's again, uh, not me at all shitting on the people who are in, because right. there are especially uh, particular instruments based union mm-hmm. and they are, are, they help, uh, musicians find gigs, good paying right. gigs. They do take care of them for, for what I do. It doesn't make a, 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 a lot, lot of sense, of, you know, just at, at, with where I'm at in my career. Um, and that was a total oversight on my there. There uh, are. But with what I do as a singer songwriter who kind of self manages and self books and I, mm-hmm. I take care of my own the stuff. It, it doesn't really. Well, it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. I do yeah. have licensing uh, right. through my publishing company and through the company that licensed me as a songwriter, which is ASCAP. OK. Um, right. In a, in a way, they and they operate. Kind let's of come back to that too. Yeah. But go ahead, go ahead. Keep but I, I mean, but it, again, it's just it's not the same as a, a, a UAW or right, an IAW right. or um, like. Well, a, the only reason I brought it up because um, during this strike, I just I just like to research and read mm-hmm. shit. Have you ever heard about the nineteen forties uh, musician strike? The, it's the the only reason I found about it because it's the longest strike in history. It is, and it it, it came during the war. 
And it was mostly jazz musicians. Yes, yes. Because the yes. big band, you're, we're talking, this is the era of Artie Shaw, mm-hmm. uh, Duke Ellington, mm-hmm. Les Brown. Duke this is Ellington. like, yes. uh, Duke Ellington is the gentleman, first gentleman yes. of jazz. <laughs> he, he was the man. But uh, let's I just see, got Harry the, James. Uh, um, the great Dan Harlem photo. You know, the, the Oh, old, dude. I just got, I just dude, got a gift Duke, to me. Duke Ellington is, yes. there, there's a cut of sophisticated lady that he did in Paris um, that is the opening theme on the Woody Allen film Curse of the Jade Scorpion, which you can't find anywhere in downloadable or even You've tried the Fire Stick, you've tried the Cody's I've, and the Cinema HDs. I've tried every I have more jazz than the city of New Orleans. I have a problem <laughs> with records. I want it on vinyl. I want either a forty five or I want an LP that has it. This oh, okay, live okay, cut this live cut is almost impossible to find. Mm. Um so, uh, so, uh, uh, but it's a Duke Ellen. It's like that, li- that cut of it. Like, there's a million cuts of Sophisticated Lady. Right. But that particular version is special. Oh my God. <laughs> and literally, I will listen to that. I will literally put that movie on just to hear that cut of it because it's so emotive. And again, mm. it's quality artwork produced in a way that gives you no, you have nowhere to hide. Mm. Yeah, and that's what art really is. Is art's job and an artist's job is to elicit a response. Yes. As the artist, you do not have a choice to that response. Your job is to elicit it, and you're not responsible necessarily for the Paco's response. Paco's trying to like get me to understand when to rein that in because, as being a photographer, sometimes I just need to do the regular degler family photo, just clean. This is all they want. Just give them what's gonna make them happy. Just go with the all the sweaters matching. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And I'm the one like while we're editing pictures, like I'll just go back to a pictures I already edited and just start tweaking shit and yeah. just like, and, like just. Uh, I'll give you some advice. Like, I, I, I'll, I'll tell you the button. the best piece of advice that I ever received yeah. was an older musician told me, "Play the gig you were hired to play." Yes, and that's that's the thing. So if for but with me, that art, I want a response. I want to. I you want do every photo that they see. Like I know, I know. Just play the but gig, but I just no. But I their, really their want to make them because if <laughs> if the gig you're hired for is making the mother smile, then then you play that gig and you right. make her smile. The thing is, you still have the files, and sometimes the response you elicit is your own, mm. and that's okay and valuable mm. and tangible and tactile too. Yep. So sometimes it's about let's be honest and it's not I don't think narcissistic but it's real we don't really do this for other people right, right. we do this because the way it makes us feel like, like it always yes. blows like my mind to right? hear, it's yeah, like yeah. I'm not playing shows for other people this makes me feel amazing right you never want them to know I might do this for less money. I don't want them right. to know that. Right. But I need I, to feel that my, the dopamine and oxytocin that I get from this yeah. keeps yes. me alive. Yes. Yeah. And it, it always blows my mind. This is how you can tell the difference between a photographer and a person with a camera. Is You'll hear some, some people, they'll be like, yeah, I, I don't do free shoots. I don't do any free shoots at all. And I'm like... At one point in time, I was on the top of my game with the photography, and I reeled it back because I was so tired of just doing what other people wanted to do that I wanted to do what I wanted to do. And if that meant cutting that stream of income off and down for them, I did that. Just because I was just so sick of the square family photography. But if you're trying to make money, you have to do that. You have to do some of that. At, I, at the beginning level, do yet. well. Do, you do the things that's like you cover have, songs for you guys. Yeah, and I, and my thing is like I'm at a point now where I will say no to that. Right, and I've been exactly. at. A, but see, I made a choice a long time ago, and I wasn't necessarily at a place where it was okay for me to say that. But right, I didn't want to compromise my convictions, and it led some to some lean times. Yep. But here's the thing: do the things you have to do. That you have to do in order to do the things you want to do. Exactly. That's that's going and, to a nine to five. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I work sixty plus hours a week, but I found a way to work sixty plus hours a week doing something that feeds me creatively. Right. 
Honestly, it doesn't take away from it, but it's taken me. I'm 39. Right. It's taken me a hot freaking minute to be able to do that. Right. So when I talk but to you, if you hit that donate button, then I can get started earlier than that. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, hold on. So, Let me bring it up. Bring it up for him live here. So you can That's hit the that Patreon button. page. You can hit that up. donate button to help an artist live a dream of creativity. <laughs> right now. That's the sign plus, up page for plus, the Patreon. I, plus, with Patreon, I mean, don't they get amazing content and stuff they can't get anywhere else? Yeah. Aren't exactly. there some yes. perks that you can't get? Yes. A lot of perks. I, I play I've done a couple stuff. shoots. Until we start getting like a good lineup of people signed up, those shoots aren't going up there. You know, yeah. I've got a shoot of a motherfucker in a unicorn head with a double dildo drinking whiskey. <laughs> like Sounds in like lingerie. Oh, that is an, actually one of the pictures doubled as the flyer for the Shut Up and Ink after party. Yeah, the after weekend. party, we doubled that picture oh. for a flyer. So we've well, got all kind of crazy plugs shit. plugs all the way around. There's no such thing as a shameless plug. <laughs> yeah, there That's it the is. Thing. Like I, um, the show I was telling you about the house party that I played last night in Franklin. Right. Uh, with Madeline Fenn who is amazing like the most amazing artist that i i'm currently playing shows with she's just a vision she's um amazing like uh it's funny because you know dion my drummer dion said right yes he said i met hey, him at cities said this, this is madeline madeline this is damien damien madeline's the female you madeline damien's the male you mm -hmm. and it <laughs> makes so much sense we bonded over a lot of stuff but she has her patreon page and the stuff she's doing through patreon for her patrons mm -hmm. Mm -hmm literally makes you want to be like okay how do i i can fit this into my budget right yeah. because can, you're getting sure. stuff that you can't like it's not ever available to anybody else yeah <laughs> when she tours she sends postcards from every city she hits to her patrons oh nice yeah. nice huh they get videos that don't air or are never seen by anybody else they right get, I, I mean she's smart about it because if people support you and what you do is important to them mm -hmm. as somebody who is an artist but i'm also a huge fan oh my god how cool is that that you so get cool. that you get stuff that's personalized that from that person stuff. you support and that you want there's nothing you want more as a fan of an artist than for them to know how much they appreciate that, that you appreciate them and that they're appreciated and that you want to continue to move what they do forward mm -hmm. when you really love an artist how long does it take you to tell a friend about them oh my god hey hey you gotta hear let, let me get somebody in my car they don't get the aux cable uh-uh mm -hmm. <laughs> please if you ain't drop pilot gets the aux cable yeah. <laughs> pilot gets the aux. unless it's a road trip <laughs> You nope. can have the aux cable, but you also got to open the beef jerky. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, I like what that. It is. <laughs> you, I need beef jerky. I need two pieces of beef jerky. <laughs> and I need three Sour Patch Kids. Yeah. Keep, keep it coming. Keep it chicken coming. Nugget keep it coming. I need you to you dunk them chicken nuggets. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you you want to yeah. be DJ. Keep it coming. You want to be DJ? You're going to feed me too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Believe yeah. that. <laughs> Full show right here. <laughs> what I want to ask you about the musician strike. Was what do you think would happen if that was to be like a a modern thing, if musicians pulled that again, like with like this with in a streaming type of era? I, I, I honestly, because if we're talking about musicians that are, because and this sucks in a lot of ways, because if we're talking about the musicians that are in the industry, which is something that a lot of people aren't really aware of. I mean, people mm -hmm. throw the phrase studio musicians around a lot. Yeah. I don't think they realize um, that it's a craft, that these people are professional in a way that does not exist outside of that, uh, right? Well, of a few cities. It's a vacuum of, of just talented people that just. These guys show up and literally. Are amazing. They nail takes. So, especially in the. Especially in industries that are supported by heavy radio play, mm -hmm. um, I, I think it would it would kind of hurt the industry in a way that we wouldn't expect. Um, right. Because there, there are some of the same players on every song yeah. oh, wow. that people just, you don't realize like, like, man, I love the bass on this song. And then you change station and change format. So say you go from a triple a format and you're listening to uh, lightning 100 right. and you hear, a song mm -hmm. and you're like oh but it's by a bigger band but it's on a triple a format which is adult alternative americana okay and you and you like that it's lightning 100 that sort of thing and you're like oh i really like that and then you switch over to a 
say 97.9 WSIX, a country station. Right. Uh, which I don't. Um, but anyway, you switch <laughs> over to that and you hear like, oh, that's, wow, man, that band's really killer. Yeah. And then you switch over to 102.9 The Buzz and you hear, oh, no, no. There's a very real chance that you're hearing some of the same musicians. Yeah, some of the um, same drummers, artists. some of the same... Well, it just depends guitars. on the artists, too. But, I mean, these guys, like, having the opportunity to have been in some of the best studios, I'm super blessed. I, I live a life that is so far above my station musically. Mm. Uh, I've been in rooms I didn't deserve to be in. I've been around musicians I didn't necessarily earn the right to be able to sit with or play right, with uh, so I've been in some He's really everybody. no but I've been yeah, in amazing. some really cool spots yeah. and um, there's a difference between a really awesome singer songwriter and a really awesome band mm. that makes their living playing Friday and Saturday nights playing their music in a regional area and maybe does regional tours and is popular makes a living mm -hmm. there's a difference between those players the individual musicians mm -hmm and first call studio musicians it's the difference between a uh, division two college basketball player and lebron james right shit i mean right. i'm not there wow. because when you look at lebron there's nothing that man can't do on a basketball court love right. him hate him whatever he's six foot eight two fifty plus can guard positions one through five mm -hmm. can do anything with the ball or without the ball mm-hmm there are musicians who will hear the first 45 seconds of your song and go, okay, stop, take it from the top. They don't even hear the whole song. They hear enough of it to go, got it. Cool. I'm not giving them charts. I'm not showing them anything. They speak music in a way that is so, it's fascinating. And they get in there and they get a couple of, maybe two takes. Hmm. And got it. And then they ask you, how do you feel about that? And you can tell them, well, can we do it where it's a little less this or a little more that? And then they'll go in and do exactly what you say. Their job is to give you what you want. And they're so good at the, they know their instrument in a way that they give you exactly what you want. So if there was a musician strike, yeah. like, and if these were the people involved in it, I mean, even as much as they're. As, as much as we're living in an age where, and I, I don't mean this as a slight, as real, real musicians, it, people bro. that play traditional instruments, okay? Right. Because I'm not going to take away anything from somebody who makes beats on their computer. Plays on or the anybody that plays. Mm. Here's the thing. You're using the tools that you're given to create music. You're right. a musician. But if we're going to talk about instrumentation, traditional instruments, yeah. guitar, bass, horn, all drums, all horns, things that you literally... Like our literal like instruments, right? Like traditional instruments, right? Yeah. If those people go on strike, it's gonna be a hard run, and you know where it's gonna hit the the labels, right? Is in their pocketbook, exactly. Because the thing is, with those guys, one or two takes. So one or two takes, we're talking five, nine, twelve, fifteen, twenty-five minutes. Their part's done next person up next guy up because it's multi-tracking it's not the right. way music used to be made so they come in and they lay their part and then the next guy comes in and lays their part down so you got guitar and then somebody mm -hmm. comes in and lays harmonica whatever it is right so they're stack you know what i mean they're running their individual parts but if if there's a strike and no one's there, and they're not available you gotta what the hell are you gonna do now you gotta get the because it's gonna take list. because the b squad the c squad and the d squad though they're the they're amazing as well, and you'd be blessed to have them involved. But they're... You're talking two takes, and not two takes because they were wrong, two takes because you need a certain flavor. Mm -hmm. So they do a take, and you're like, ah, need a little bit more grease on that one. <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay. So he switches a little thing around, gives you a little bit more greasiness. That's a t-shirt. A little more grease on no, that one. I need a little bit more grease on that one. Right? That, that's a single for you. <laughs> right? A little bit more grease on that. The thing is, when grease. you get down to the C or the D squad, yeah, it's going to take four or five takes to get to the, I like that, but I needed a little more grease on that one. Mm. And then the translation, then as he puts that into the computer and works it down through the matrix, you're looking at five or six more takes before he understands what put a little more grease, grease on, on that it. one. Yeah. 
So you know, because these guys, they're not younger guys. They've seen everything. They've been there, done that, got the T-shirt, weren't impressed the first time. Yeah. They're seseasoned cats. They can play anything. So, I mean, it would that it would, would throw, cripple, would especially everything. anything that is a, a radio industry style of music right now. Anything that is dependent on radio support. Mm. Because the whole thing is 18 months is about as long as an artist that charts wants to go without a release right uh, even in this era of singles yeah so what you want to you drop a single and then you follow that up right. and you follow that one up right and you follow that up and you're almost at the end of the ep or if it's a full length right well while that's all going on you're writing and tracking so you're working on the next one so in 18 months you can like go. right before you drop your new single you put the whole record on Spotify. You put the whole thing out there for everybody to have so they don't have to buy the whole thing. Right. You know what I mean? So, but then you release something new and, oh, I've got them. And then they get into your back catalog and that's how you make money streaming. Right. Mm. But if you mm. take the musicians out, because we're, we're not in the business of producing real bands anymore that show up right. and make records the way records used to be made. Right, no. Nah. Like Cadillac Records type. Well, no, because yeah. oh no, absolutely, and and even like um, like Muscle Shoals, like in Muscle Shoals, like I I've um, I, I someone that I'm very close with, their father was like the original like bass player, the original Muscle Shoals sound. Mm. So like playing with all these huge cats, right? And everybody went to Muscle Shoals to, to get this R&B sound that didn't exist. Aretha went there, for Christ's sake. I oh. mean, uh, Rolling Stones went there because they love R&B. Right. And they wanted that sound. So Stones went to Muscle Shoals. You know what I mean? Everybody went there for a reason. I get what you mean when you're able to sit in these rooms that just... That I don't feel like I'm... Yes, wow. exactly. So I'm you know sitting on a couch talking with you know, Norbert, well, Norbert <laughs> Putnam, who lived here in Columbia for a while. And uh, literally is like, amongst bass players, kind of deified, kind of a deity. Wow. Um, be, because he is not, it's not just that he's so good or that he's seen so much or he was an amazing producer, but he did things that previous to him were not done on, on large format records. Innovative. Um, I like that. Yeah, he had a, yeah. man, he had a little bootsy on him. You know what I mean? For, for a white dude from Florence. Ooh. He had a little, yeah. A little boost in him. Yeah, a little fat oh. on the ends. Aye. You know? Like he, okay. nah, he was, you know, and that's the thing. It's like, and it's, I mean, he's played on so many freaking songs. that like, you would be like, what? For real. That's a white dude from Florence? Right. You know? Hmm. For real. I, like, it's making me think like how many because you know how uh, well before we started the show we were talking well no we were on the show Bobby Caldwell that was yeah yeah, yeah yeah but uh, it makes me think now there's a legion many... of Bobby Caldwells man yeah that's exactly <laughs> yeah, no man and I, I I know a couple of them where you're just like say what there's a dude out of um uh, there's a cat out of um gosh I want to say he's uh, and I hope I don't bastardize this but I I, I want to say he's He's a, a Londoner. I think he's from London, but he might be from a, a different town. I know he's a British dude. Mm -hmm. He's like Miller Blue, and he does a cover of uh, Redbone by Childish Gambino. Oh. Stay away! Dude, like it is the coldest thing I've ever seen in my life. It's him. Is it online? Can yeah, I, man. Oh, no, of course. Of yeah, course. it's on a, a Mahogany Sessions, which is a beautiful YouTube channel that curates amazing yes. both videos. And you guys would love this being in videography. Uh-huh. It's beautiful video, beautiful audio of live performances. They bring people in and they just record them doing their thing. But That's this dude, like, oh, I'm just sitting there looking at him going, bruh. Right. Because he looks like he should be like, literally, n this is not what he should be doing. Right. But that's the thing about music and the beauty about music is it's not about, it. it's a beauty about art or, or really humanity in general. Like, stop looking at people and, and making ridiculous assumptions. assumptions. Yes. Yeah, because when you make an assumption, you make an ass out of you an umption. <laughs> <laughs> what about, uh, what's dude, uh, gosh, he passed away. Um, Michael Clark Duncan. <laughs> hey. He was like, you make an ass out of you and yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and, yourself. Ew, and that's enough. You look at that dude and you're like, 
That should have been Luke Cage, first off. Yeah, well, you know? he's dead. He died. You know, Michael Clark No, I know. I'm not happy. Oh, okay, about it. I'm okay. just saying, when I look, when I think <laughs> Power Man, I'm like, damn. Yeah, that's but true. But let's be honest, like, Luke Cage was probably one of the best Marvel things ever. Yeah, it was yeah. good. Especially that, was, that first I, season. Damn. So yes. I know they canceled them all, but I think they're they gonna... canceled them all on Netflix. What the hell? Well, oh, Disney's yeah. coming out with their own streaming. Yeah, service. I know, but I ain't got money for that too. And they're gonna do the Mandalorian on there. Can we just also? Just... I'm a Star Wars nerd, and it's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> he said it's, it's, it's a... not a problem. It's all right. No, but it's just. Like... I think you can cancel Netflix and do Disney. That, that's gonna be yeah, dope. But, but I... you want some Netflix too? I. You know what? I don't know if I want some Netflix. Bullshit! Compared Peaky to... Blinders. Oh, yeah, I can't miss nice. Peaky Blinder, man. Oh, Nothing ever makes face. a white dude want to wear a funny <laughs> hat and go cut people like Peaky look, Blinders. Look, <laughs> look, man, Eddie Murphy's about to do stand up again. You want Netflix. That's true. I Plus, Dave Chappelle and Bill outfit. Burr just dropped Paper Tiger. Paper yeah. Tiger is awesome. Bill, dude, how beautifully was that shot? Right? Those shots from behind, it looked like a Zeppelin so concert. It was amazing. God. And I, I amazing. Like, like that he really takes. Uh, uh, Bill Burr don't give any shits, does he? he? Fuck. He don't know what a fuck looks like. No, he, <laughs> he, 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 he checked his like. pocket, his car. He ain't got none. He ain't got none to get out of him, man. man. But you can oh. tell that he he had to go to London and do that. If you guys haven't like seen Paper Tiger on Netflix, Good uh, Mr. God. William Burr, Billy Burr, old freckle face, oh BB, oh BB, <laughs> did a great. Great job! And like, oh, all his stuff's good though, man. That dude, because he's smart. He's so, and he's like on that. See, the coolest thing that that I saw Bill Burr at Zanies in Nashville. Oh, nice. The day Rick James died. Oh no! Charlie Murphy, Bill Burr. Oh, what's the dude that's Ashy Larry? What's his name? Donald. Oh, I don't Donald, know. Uh, uh, Donnell Rollins. Donnell Rollins yes. it was Donnell Rollins, Charlie Murphy, and Bill Burr. At Zany's in Nashville, the day Rick James died. Oh, wow. So Charlie Murphy was just oh, supposed to MC, and it was those God. two. And so we <laughs> got tickets, and I'm just like, and Donnell is a killer. He's a killer. I bet dude. he is. He's amazing. Yeah. He He's didn't amazing. get enough screen time, I don't think. I'll but man, as show. a stand up, that dude is a straight gangster. He's so <laughs> killer, man. It's insane. So he got up there and just murdered. Mm. And but the cool part was Charlie Murphy introduces everybody, so he's MC in between. He comes on and he's upset about Rick. Yeah. So oh, yeah. he sat down for about fifteen minutes and told stories that weren't on Chappelle Show. Oh, all that, and it was nice. just like, oh my god, it was hilarious and heartwarming and sad and human wow. and beautiful. So we're, we're we're seeing that and just like, oh, f- how lucky are we right now? How lucky, right. you know? And, and that, then, that's like Patreon lucky. content. If you could have got that on a Patreon, oh. you know what I mean? So he he does that, and then and then Donnell comes out. And just slays, just like, just, just slayed it. And then Charlie oh. comes back out and does like another 10, 15 minutes of telling stories about all this crazy shit. And yeah. like, you don't even know crazy till you've been in a drive through. Those line guys in the building. With, with Rick right. James. The drive through line. He's like, You ever been in a drive through with Rick James? I was like, I don't know Rick James. I've never been anywhere with Rick James. <laughs> He's like, You don't know shit. And then Charlie Murphy hips me to some shit. Right, right. <laughs> I was just looking around going, Am I the only one that knows how amazing this is? Right, and right. Thankfully, I was with cool people and they were like, This is fucking amazing. I was like, Yeah, I know. I know. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Shut up. This is amazing, you know? And then Bill Burr comes on. Yeah. And I literally, at that point in my life, that was the funniest stand up set I'd ever seen. I was just like, who is this ginger ninja? He's amazing. He's amazing. As you see him, like, you're like this dude. And it, then when he, but when he starts talking though, like and his, when he does that point, little that little pacing and going, eh, you know what I'm saying? Eh. <laughs> like, because I know that dude, but also I know but you that don't guy. you don't expect that dude. To have like legit street flavor, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Right. But he does. He, he right. really does. Like, He's from the, Boston. Like so, he has like a he has a very devil may care, but I kind of care, but only if I want to. Yeah, but he's not but, afraid of anything. Not shit. No. He's fearless as fuck. And I love that he's because fearless. in art, when you're fearless, that's when you get stuff done. Yes. You know that's yes. that's when you get that's why Nina Simone's Nina Simone. She ain't scared of anybody. No. You know what I mean? That's where I, I I pray for fearlessness because of Nina Simone. It's actually mm. part of my prayers now. Because there's this clip of her when she's, uh, what is freedom? Somebody asked what freedom what is. is. Freedom? And she was like, uh, no fear. She's yeah. like, imagine just having no fear in a, in a situation. Like, if I could have had that half my life, I would have been. I don't know where I would have been. Like, and that just made me start. Like, if Nina Simone mm-hmm. said that, that half her life she was in fear. 
Well, oh, I mean, my goodness. If, if, you watch, if you watch What Happened, Miss Simone, if you watch that documentary mm -hmm. and you are not crying hearing it. I'm so glad you said that. I don't think you have a pulse, <laughs> so, man. Because when, when you first said it, I, I was in my head. I was weeping, like, dude. I'm telling you, cry. <laughs> no, dude, I was weeping. Yes. Because, like, literally, like, <clears throat> my musical heroes, uh, Nina Simone has always been in the three people that are, to me, the most important. If you're talking Desert Island, mm. if you're talking Desert Island, all heroes, right, we're talking Desert Island. What's the three, three, my three musical heroes? Three musical heroes, but you only, but you only get to take their best album. Okay. What's 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 the three? Which album you taking? Which? Uh, Nina Simone sings the blues. Mm. Jeff Buckley, Grace. I haven't heard of Jeff Buckley before. Jeff Buckley, oh. Oh, you got homework. It's going to be great for you. <laughs> yeah, I It's going to be great for you because he's basically the male Nina Simone with a dash of Robert Plant um, and a, a whole lot of soul, but also a little bit of Zeppelin. No, he's... No. Jeff Buckley? Jeff Buckley is literally my favorite artist. If you, you can give me one, I'll just take Jeff Buckley's entire catalog and go to Desert Island right now. For real? Absolutely, 100%. My favorite singer, my favorite songwriter, my favorite vocalist. Jeff Buckley, period. Wow. Period. And I own more music than most countries. <laughs> most countries. <laughs> most countries. But like right, literally. If you had to pick a third, who would be your third? Well, I have a third. And it's it's definitely Bob Dylan. And it's the Live at Budokan record. Okay. Okay. Um, because okay. Bob was an amalgamation of so many different things. He was, uh, he was a rebel. Mm -hmm. He was a lover. Mm -hmm. He was fearless. And he wrote some of the best songs and always put the best band around him. What either you know what? I'm gonna take back. Not live at Budokan. Love that record. I'll do before the flood. I'll do that live record because that's when he has the band with him. Before so he has Levon Helm and Robbie Robertson and Ooh. Rick Danko and yeah and and Richard Manuel and yeah like the the band because they're so like this. Yeah, I'm because at before the flood and, and just Jeff Buckley period. Yeah, just start with Grace. Like literally and when Grace comes on, like find it like light some candles, bro. They might he said light some candles. You might want to run a bath cuz this is grown fuck shit. <laughs> <laughs> this is grown fuck shit. It's like literally the way this record starts, it starts with a song called Mojo Pen, which is like the most intoxicatingly beautiful post rock song I've ever heard in my life. Wow. And starts with these harmonic things off of his guitar, and then he just hits this crazy, beautiful falsetto. He's like, ooh, he's got this beautiful voice, and you're just like, the fuck? you know, and then just <laughs> repeats that, and then like, and he's playing this guitar line that's just like this amazing picking, and the, the, and the lyrics, and he writes amazing lyrics, and he died way too soon, but. He has, there, there's a verse in the song that I literally, when I start getting ink, it's over. I'm going to be the painted man because I have no tattoos yet. You don't have any tattoos? Not yet, but there's a thing coming up. So yes. Oh, yes. There's a thing. Hey, there's a thing wait, wait. Up. Should we jump in on that one real quick? Hey, and if you but would I, like I, to get in on, tell on the tattoos, come to the after party. It'll be uh, it's a tattoo party and we have alcohol and we have some food. Yes. No reason to miss it. That's there may, November And there may 9th. be music, right? That's yes, yes. Look, so let me let me yeah, run yeah. down. This yeah. is it, y'all. November 9th. Hold on, let me let me change this camera angle right here, straight on, there so I can go. look at it. Get him. November 9th, we're doing Shut Up and Ink. Shut up and ink. So, on that day, it'll be a tattoo competition. Most local shops are competing. Yeah. Okay. They will be competing for a six hundred dollar cash prize. In yeah. the meantime. In our whole area we have uh, rented, we're going to have Damian Boggs himself. He will yeah. be performing. Yeah. Okay. Um, Short and Low yeah. will be performing. Yeah. Uh, what is the, what's the Poets Club called? The Po Boys and Poets. Po Boys and Poets yeah. will be performing. Yeah. Um, Blue Moon Bambi will be fire dancing and doing this pole dancing demonstration. Yeah. Um, Derek Weaver will do a glass blowing um, demonstration. Yeah. What am I leaving out? I feel like I'm leaving out somebody. I don't think you are. Is that it? I feel like So that's... that will be going on outside with food trucks, you know, vendors selling yeah. clothes and shirts and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Afterwards, we're doing an after party. Okay. After parties at the Sky Bar. 
there will be some tattoo artists there available. There will be um, music. It will, it's like a cool down from after this big event. You sit, chill, relax, eat, drink. Um, Supreme Vegan will be available serving food, okay? Uh, Sky Bar will also have wings and a couple other things. But, um, but yeah, that's all day, November 9th. Just block that whole shit out, okay? And just the whole spread, and it's free. It's free. Fuck it. Why can't you? You want something free to do? Something that's not gonna cost you money? Unless you want to eat or buy clothes? Come out. Come out. And Damien's to gonna go on around seven. Short and low goes on at six. Okay, those are the two musical acts. That's PM. And um, oh boys and poets is going on right before uh short. Short and, short and low. low. Yep. So you want to see the the glass blowing demonstration? That's beforehand also. So that's all going on. It's free. <laughs> I don't have to sell you. I don't have to sell you tickets. It's free. Hey, who's doing the glass blowing? Derek Weaver. Okay. Yeah. uh, Yeah. You ever? You might have come across his videos a couple times. He's, but he's got a beard just like yourself, except he's uh, he's a black man, and uh, all he does is he has these cool goggles on, and he plays some funky tracks Mm. and blows glass. Nice. You know, nice pieces, some cool stuff, man. Is there gonna be a record player there? Um, Might no, but it may be. I mean, well, you can bring one. Bring one. Bring, yeah, one. Yeah, bring yeah. one. I just, man, I, so I found this new James Brown record. Uh-oh, here oh, here it is. Like, no, but it just got released. Like, right. it was recorded in 70. It's no singing, but it's like his psychedelic funk record. Nice. And it's... James Brown has a psychedelic funk record. Yeah. It's That's dope. What's the name of uh, psychedelic funk. For real? <laughs> yeah, straight to the point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, no, we, I, I'm, I don't have any ink. I'm excited. Tell me more about this thing, man. Okay. So what we did. And, and, I know you said local shops. Are yeah, or, yeah. Next year will be bigger. But we had a like. But this is the inaugural one. This yeah. is, like, this yeah. is the, yeah. Never the been inaugural. done before. Yeah. Right. Inaugural. Let's do it. Right. So what we did. Is there's a lot of like uh, commotion between the shops. It's not a united community, and we're trying to unite, and it should be. Squash that. That's what we're trying to do, man. So look, we've got it, and we're trying to bring this community together because it is an art form. So I want it to be accepted through art, through Mm -hmm. themselves as artists. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of beef, and and it's actually the first art form when it comes to Columbia that already has a foothold, not something that has to work his way in like because you know, i mean you look, think about it you got yeah there's broadmoor brightmore there's Bro- brightmoor brightmoor yeah, i got your back go no, ahead no no go no ahead. broadmoor was a theater near where i grew up is that dollar theater with oh, a sticky okay. floor so yeah, i always yeah. think when i hear <laughs> more i'm like oh broadmoor that's that dollar theater with yeah. a sticky floor <laughs> <laughs> you know you ever go to a dollar theater floor it's always like sticky yes, yeah yeah like what did they do what did they mop this with gummy bears yeah <laughs> but, uh, is it pepsi so brightmoor brightmoor that's where levi's at right yeah yeah okay so there's brightmoor ronan Right. Revolution, Lucky, yep. uh, Lucky, yep. And um, who else is there? There's a there's several Golden Yeti. No, yeah, no Golden, Golden Yeti. Yeti's in Frank, but yeah. they're competing. Are they? Yes. yes, they have a great reputation. Oh, I know. A guy that I worked with got an amazing piece by them. And right. Um, and it's there's a Mule Town. Is it called like Mule Town Art Emporium? It's like over there where, where flip flipping oh, yes. used to be. It's something like that. Mm-hmm. No, it's Mule Town. It, ah, I forget the name. I apologize so much. Mule Town. But Shauna from there is going to be competing. Uh, any listeners out there know the correct name? Please tag it in here. Mm. Um, Let's just all show up and support the art, y'all. right? So like, there's, this is such an ancient art form. This is a yes. competition for six hundred dollars. So you get six hundred bucks if you want. Not win. only that, how about you get the you get to Yeah. You get to be the winner of a competition amongst your peers. Right. But not only that, how about you get to be around your peers? Right. How about how about we get to be like because if I went to a songwriting competition, which I'd never do, but if I went to a songwriting competition, it's just you know why I would go there? Because I want to be around other songwriters, camaraderie, exactly. camaraderie contemporaries. I want look, to know, earn the respect of your contemporaries, and you know what? You'll never de- be disappointed in your work. Because as much as I care what a listener might think, I really care what a songwriter thinks. Yeah. Right. And I think tattooists are the same way. Hell yeah. The public hasn't seen this yet. So I'm going to show you. Okay, you've know. seen our logo, the Who Dad Pocket, the owl and everything. And I love that it's Who Dad, me being a Saints fan. Yeah, so. there it is. <laughs> yes, I, okay, yes. Drew Brees came back today, 373, three touchdowns. Yes. So this is, this is the yes. trophy. 
It, it, the bottom hasn't been laid on the plaque Don't yet, but this is the them. trophy. I'm not showing them. Don't I'm show showing them. Damian Bob's reaction shit. video. There's your that. camera right here. Be careful. You ready for this dope ass trophy? This camera right there. Look at All this right. thing right here. Is that not sick as fuck? Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. That's crazy. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> this trophy, y'all. Nah, nah, nah. It's dope. When I say it's dope, it's dope, dope. It's, it's the shocker dope. saying, no, 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 no. He exactly. said it so quick. Y'all don't remember Sil D. Yeah, I remember Sil. Right. That's Silk the most the famous shocker. offbeat rapper ever. ever. Dude, he could not keep tempo with a metronome in his pocket. No, <laughs> nothing. You know who I liked, matter. though, back in the day? Y'all remember Fiend? Oh, Fiend, oh, yeah. He was dope, shit, man. man. Right? Fiend. He I fucked every mystical, two, too. Dude, oh, mystical back in the, But you remember every mystical. Tuesday, No Limit and Cash Money were both dropping records, man. Yeah. And it was just a thing, man. Because you had, but No Limit always had the cool looking CDs, the, you know. The album cover artwork was, was always crazy. Because remember that Master P that had the orange one with like the rivets like in the side. Yeah, of it? <laughs> the <laughs> plastic like, like the real make pl crack like this. Remember that? Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh my god. You know what I fucked? I fucked with the Cain and Abel off of No Limit. Cain and too. Abel was dope. Yes. Man. You know what? That CD that is not on Spotify. No, it's not. I don't, I'm like, why? I wasn't looking for it. It's because it's a royalty <laughs> issue. <laughs> well, no, they also pulled that record into a court case and prosecuted one of them for murder. Yeah, because he rapped about murder. Yeah, okay, he, kids, <laughs> as not a rapper, but someone who really appreciates the genre. <laughs> um, don't rap about your crimes. Right. No. You know, I don't sing about mines. Right. You know, right. I don't do a lot of them, but I don't be like, but don't oh, rap I was, about it. you know. And I, if you do say happen to commit a crime and you want to rap about a crime, I don't even, your crime. Yeah. I don't even <laughs> sing about public intoxication. Right. Because right. right. <laughs> they might come. Yes. Right. Look, and. <laughs> anyway, like what had happened was <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. No, exactly. but what I was, what I was telling him before I, and I'm so excited. I, Thank you for having me to be a, as a tattoo virgin to be a part of this. Yes, it's, awesome. It's super huge, but I this will probably be my ink cherry will get burst. Yeah, on this some bitch, but um, Ooh, if it's not before, because I don't know, man, I'm itching. Yeah, I'm itching. Just and, wait till uh, I forgot. We're Just both. We yeah, but Go do you ahead. do you know um do you guys know Whitney Harrington? Um, she does a lot of the mural work. She just did the big mural on the Edward Jones building, the okay. Columbia. Yeah. Oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, she did um, all the stuff in Buck and Board and in Buckhead. Oh. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah. She did the mule. Her and Quan. Y'all know Quan. Yeah, Quan's yeah, yeah, yeah. been on the show. Yeah, so her and Quan collaborated to do that mule on the side of Lennon Duck. Right. So like she That's just, who he was talking about because he talked about that on the show. That's right. Yes. That's yeah. right. She's, so we she's awesome. Yeah. She's fantastic. Well, she came up with a tattoo design for me for mm. my first tattoo. Um, and I'm super excited about it. What, so is it? what is um, it? So it's me and Paco had to come up. I, I, I'm home. from um, I'm, so I'm from South Louisiana, right? But I've lived here in in Tennessee, in Middle Tennessee, Nashville, or Columbia since um, right before Katrina. Right. We, uh, we moved up here right before Katrina. Got lucky, mm. um, or you know, divine intervention. Right, 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 right. Um, you create your own luck. That's true. You know, I worship hard. I feel like God takes care of me. All right. Okay. Um, I'm talking about. But shout out to my dad. No, so my uh, I, I want on my my forearm right here. It's a fleur de lis, which and if you're familiar with the traditional design of a fleur de lis, mm -hmm. it's um a spike that looks like a spear and two curved pieces. Right. Mm -hmm. And then there's a knot that ties it together as a piece of ironwork that ties it together. Mm -hmm. It's usually a circle knot and a strap. Right. Well, the circle to me, the fleur de lis is very important to me where right. I'm from. Not just as a Saints fan, but uh, like what also that brand that brand wasn't always. If you were branded with a fleur de lis as a woman, you were it's it's like the scarlet letter, it wasn't it? Right, anything. right. Wow. Um, that even is shown up in um, the Three Musketeers by Alexander Dumas. Okay, like yes. it tracks literary history. Um, but on that, I want a circle knot, and mm -hmm. in that circle, I want the Tennessee Tristar. Oh, okay. Oh. So I feel like nothing says me more than a fleur de lis with a Tennessee Tristar. Right, gotcha, so gotcha. She drew that for me in a way that I think is most excellent. Okay. And um, that's that's what I want to get. Um, okay. But when we get off the air, I'm going to tell you a couple of artists to go to okay. to get that done. Okay. But look, what I was telling you about, like when I started talking about Jeff Buckley, and like mm -hmm. there's a tattoo that I will have at some point. What? Um, in that song, Mojo Pen, there's some lyrics that... Um, and maybe this is a little masochistic or sadomasochistic or I'm, maybe I'm a weirdo. I, I'm a weirdo, but maybe this is <laughs> He's like, maybe I'm a um, weirdo. I'm a the, weirdo. But I literally want this, these lyrics kind of down my my back, kind of down my ribs and back area. Mm. And it says, 
uh, there's a lyric in it that says, The words of your scorn, my love, give me more. Send whips of opinion down my back, give me more. Mm, uh, whips of opinion. Yeah. Wow. And I'm just huh. like, I like that. If you put that anywhere but on your back, you're a liar. Right. And I'm not right a liar. There. Yeah, but like, and the way that he sings it, oh, like, I'm telling you, like, and he covers Lilac Wine by Nina Simone on that record. Huh. And I'm it is. It out. Dude, he's a gr- this grown Buckley. folks. Jeff Buckley, man, for the win. Right. For the, and, and, and this might be blasphemous until you hear it. My favorite R&B song of all time is a song that he didn't get to release because he died before and they released it after he died. Oh, but wow. there's a song called Everybody Here Wants You. Everybody Here Wants You. And it's the dopest R&B song I've ever heard in my life. And this little mystery white boy recorded it. And it is, man, and it's on Spotify. It okay. is on Spotify. And the night with your fingertips. <laughs> So, mm-hmm. I had uh, I promised the viewers we were going to talk addiction a little bit because you had chimed in about it. Mm-hmm. So, um, do you want to give your testimony first or do you want us to jump in with kind of our regimen and agenda of things we're going to be trying to do coming up? Well, let's, let's start with what you guys are doing. And okay. I'll, I'll speak a little bit on my history, my past, my current battle, my... Because it's never over. Right. The thing is, it's not a it's not a title fight. It's not a the the thing with addiction is it's never over right. for an addict. Right. As somebody who has struggled with several different substances, um, it's it, it just it, and that's okay. Right. That it's never over. That doesn't mean you're losing. Right. You know what I mean? But it's. Um, if if I'm not conscious about my struggles with substances, then I'm not being honest with myself. And also, if I'm not if I'm not honest about my issues with substances, I'm not being uh, transparent or vulnerable. Which is, as an artist, those two things are really important. Right. As a performance artist, in particular, right. Right. like if I'm not transparent and I'm not vulnerable. I'm not being honest. And why the hell would you pay a cover charge to come see me do what I do? Right. Because if I'm lying to you. The movie theaters over there. If you want imagination, yeah. You want if you want, if you want make believe and fiction, it's over there. But if you want to see me deal with my shit, and maybe then you can deal with your Let's shit, see. and we can deal with our shit together, right? That's, and that is the beauty of Damien motherfucking balls. Well, that's just <laughs> art. I think that's art, though. Like, no, isn't that the man, point? It's communal. That, what's the song that I've been? humming what's the name oh of you it? like pointless love pointless bro because the first line bro got me through shit <laughs> hey bro i couldn't i haven't been able to find the song all i could remember for years whenever that was we did the the uh breast cancer shoot like yeah maybe two years ago yeah like i remember you playing that though uh uh let me just sit there and, like listening to the stuff you're working on yeah and that that beginning was so open and he told me the story behind it and it was some real shit and there's been moments in my life to where like it'll be a fucked up ass morning, yeah. And that'll and 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 in a and out of sadness, all I all I do is just start humming. <laughs> like cause at that point, all I could think about is there's only I only know one other person that's like been in a situation like this, and he he wrote a song about it. So well, let me, but, uh, the thing is like uh, what what I find gives me a lot of comfort in moments like that is knowing that I'm not so many times in our lives we want to be unique right mm-hmm. but i think when um as somebody who like severe depressive disorder like major depressive disorder ridiculous anxiety uh suicidality for being completely honest like i have some issues that i work with Me and too. i'm i i deal with them in an artistic way yeah. uh it gives me somewhere to put my bullshit yeah. um, i'm also very open about it because it makes me accountable Yes. So if you see me post something on social media, it's not a pity party. I put it there because I have to see that shit and then I have to be accountable. I don't need, I'm not asking somebody to be, oh my God, that's horrible. No, no, I know it's horrible. I live, I get my mail there. Mm, I know that. Right. Uh, what I'm doing is allowing myself accountability. This because is key I, to happiness. Because I, I put it there mm-hmm. and now it's in bold face and I don't right. get to run from it because I put my name on it. You mm-hmm. know? So mm-hmm. if something matters, put your, put your name on it put, put or don't say anything. Yep. Yeah. Don't say anything. Or if you do, put your name on it. Right. Stand on it. Stand on it. Like, yeah, like, yeah, I'm hurting right now. Today is tough. Mm-hmm. 
I put a post out the other day and a lot of people, the, the support that I got from people not just saying, hey, we're with you, which is great. I love that. I love hearing I'm with you. Right. But I also love hearing is somebody saying, oh my God, me too. And then me messaging them saying, hey, you're not by yourself. You just me. said me too. So. Because being alone like is pull, the yeah, feelings in those But that's what man. anxiety and depression will do to you. Yeah. But we're not alone. Statistically, all- there are a mother load of us. Yes. Here's the thing. Own, own it. Like, it, it's not Fight Club. We can fucking talk about mental illness. We can talk about addiction. This is not Fight Club. Right. We can talk about it. And if we don't, we're doing a disservice, especially right. as males. Right. Like, Danny Coleman has the coolest thing going on right now, you guys. Um, do, you, do y'all know Danny Coleman? Yeah. Danny Redbeard? Um, I don't know. He's doing a thing for Movember. It's literally shave your beard. Just grow your mustache. Post about it. It's literally about mental health for males. Mm. I think uh, not- fermenting uh, opinions is participating in that. Actually, mm. yes, the, yes. They're, they're down in Asgard. Yes, exactly. Yes, yes I so have Asgard's heard. on board. I know Shorn's on board. A lot of people are on board. But the thing is, like, shining lights, shining lights on stuff that, like, and and it's not saying that mental health and and females is not important but but statistically showing like as males we're not we're not allowed to even talk about that a lot of times for real and it, that's in some ways going to be seen as a, a little bit unpopular because historically we have been such a powerful almost oppressive presence to females mm-hmm. I, I think that's just fact yeah um yeah. but it it doesn't mean that we're not suffering also. And I think that uh, a lot of service members have been coming home and, and because they are predominantly male and showing us that the they're... damage done. Yes. Uh, but I don't think it, it's just them. You know I mean? It's, it's, no, it's no. almost pandemic and where it is. So let's talk about it. Let's use a month and let's talk about that. And let's, Man. let's find, let, can we save a life? Can we save one life? Right. Can we save one life? You save one life. We save one life. It. Who gives a shit? It was it all worth it. Because how are you going to tell me what the monetary value of a life is? Because there isn't one. Because it's a life. It's a sentient being that has emotions yep. and people that care about them and people they care about. No. And a future. If you, if you Absolutely. So, so that, 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 Let me jump in here real quick and get a rundown of what we're going to do. Mm-hmm. So... Honestly, sorry, because we'll yeah, wax it, poetic all night. I know, I, know. I see this. I'm like, yeah, I'm I gotta cut through well, this I shit. I like a, to see Brandon so long, like man. a inside night, man. Like a, while, <laughs> man. So sure. this is what we're gonna do. We First, we're gonna get a a drug counselor on here. Okay, that'll be our guest, and we want to. I'll end up putting the phone number up here and everything, so it'll be down in that corner. And everything. So I want to have a drug counselor come on here and give options and stuff to anyone suffering from the addicts. Okay. Then I want to get a family member of someone. This is not all in the same episode either. This will be in different episodes. I want to get a family member of someone who has lost someone to addiction to t- to talk to people about grieving and stuff like that and how to go past. Then I'm going to talk with a person that is a functioning not a functioning addict but a rec- functioning recovering addict who has really yeah. bounced their life somebody in recovery yeah. yes that Absolutely. can give people what to do after because plenty of people have gone to rehab and then they come out and they're like uh and, you know they don't yeah. know what to do and they end up going back to the same people and well it's you it's, know it's a puzzle man it's yeah, a, and, it's, and it's not a puzzle they gave you the answers to. Right. And not in a bad way. You know, right. everybody's... I just want to give people options yeah. and information. But the thing is, no one person will have the answer. Right. As, like, as a multiple-time struggler. Right. That I, For me, the key is honesty, accountability, and giving yourself the opportunity to fall down seven but get up eight. Right. Here's the here's the thing that really like like heroin has mm. heroin and meth both have gripped Columbia by the balls in a way that every Sunday morning I woke up for like two months somebody was there. I think this the first yeah. week. This is the first week. I, I think haven't this is the first week for real. Yeah. yeah. This is the first week in like two months. months. 
Yeah. That we haven't woke up to like a death. Yeah. Of a young adult. You know what I mean? No, I, no absolutely. And the, and the thing, like, and a lot of that is product of the freaking opiate yes. pandemic. And yes. That's, that's that's which was started, well, to I me, was started. I want to talk to pharmacists. I want to talk to Yes, like, we do have well, a drug. A, a pharmacist would be too. great, but let's, mm-hmm. let's find an orthopedist, man. Because let me tell you, as somebody who has had over a dozen freaking major operations Mm -hmm. and when i started having them in the mid 90s it was not they give you plethora like skittles yeah like skittles and and it just and it is so because here's the thing do they help with the pain after major surgery absolutely How much do you need to, but part of recovery and rehab in the same way as with addiction right. is learning to manage your pain here mm-hmm. as much as it is here. Mm-hmm. Right. I can take all the pills I want, but if I can't learn to, okay, I can't move that way right now because it hurts. Then, then how am I going to get better? Exactly. Pain is part of the process. Thank you. So, uh, th- like that's a tricky thing, but with, but they just keep doling them out. They give you like it's um, the regulations are much better now. Yeah. But the problem is, you already got all the addicts. No, the, so you're addicted to it. <laughs> you're addicted to it. Yeah. What do you do? Because methadone doesn't work for opiates, right? Mm. And methadone does not work for opiates. And that's why I feel like it was almost yeah, like a, a setup. Are. Are yes. limited. So yeah, what you end up doing is you end up doing heroin. Yes. Yeah, that's what we, we're you end almost up doing like heroin, and then to methadone. It, mm-hmm. it felt like a setup oh. because it was like. We had a lot of people that were shucking out opiates left and right. And then they just did like all around crackdown. And then all of a sudden. Then you created withdrawal and then you created heroin addicts. Well, not, well hold on. They, we had it where it just went shoop, like you said, sucked it all up. Withdrawals. And we really didn't have heroin here in the area, but then all of a sudden we did. You know well, what I mean? Well, that's the thing is you didn't have heroin that you knew of. In the area, and I don't—I don't mean that to sound like there's any naivete on this right, show. Right, right. What I'm telling you is like, where you have opiates, you have, you have heroin. Yeah. And whether then, it is true black tar heroin, oh. whether it is like, and here's the, and and as long as I've lived here, there's there have been people who do and fully functioning, mm-hmm. fully right. functioning. The only thing is, once productive they members away. of society doing yeah. heroin. Heroin's not a drug that you and. and it's but a it's a tricky thing, and but heroin is not, and it's, it's, it's not just that that drug. It's not like weed, man. No, which and is that's, not that's it's not, where because I, I feel like like what well, is not feel. I know that you're right that the hair, that like well, we call it dog food, like that like it's been here for a while. But when you have the opioids and it gets sucked away, then you have withdrawals. Now that little bit that was underneath the surface that, you know, a it's few people might do, it mm-hmm. bubbles up. And then when that bubble up, we have this turn up culture. Yeah. So now it's, I pop three pills. So you feel like, all right, when I'm doing this new stuff, I got to go to the max with this right. too. Right, a lot of people and don't realize. That will fucking kill you. With heroin, well, and then with you can't fentanyl, buy a surplus And then that. the fentanyl, man. Like, people like, are walking around with, with Narcan shots. Yeah, because, because they, they have to. They know they're going to kill themselves. Yeah. And they'll shoot. In, well, like, here's like, the problem. There used to be, and this might be the most ridiculous statement you'll ever hear in your life. But there used to be an understanding between a user and a dealer. Mm-hmm. Don't. There used to be an understanding. Don't you sell me a certain thing? You don't sell me anything else, right? There used to be an understanding between a user and a dealer. Now it's just it said you sell me what you told me you sold me and nothing else. And I don't know if it's coming from suppliers or what, but people are dying. A lady I work with, her yeah. her husband is with Murray County Sheriff's Department, mm. and the things that I'm hearing are about this fentanyl stuff is. People are it's, adding it themselves. How, why have okay, and and not that this is a good statement, but let's be honest. You used to be able to trust your drug dealer, no matter your peccadillos or whatever. whatever it was. But there was a point in time when you could trust your drug dealer to give you what you what, what you, you what, which is not. I'm not saying for. that's a good thing. No, but it but was the fact steel. that people are giving you something that will kill you, whether you get it by hook, crook, or what, and you don't even know. <clears throat> Like, you don't and do they know. know? And who is killing the youth of America? 
when there's a chance, an opportunity through counseling, through mm-hmm. drug counselors, mm-hmm. through community outreach, through music, I swear to God, the the best high you can get, <laughs> the best high you can get is on a stage, man. Yeah. The best that it's the best high you can ever have in your life. Mm-hmm. It's the most fun you can have without going to jail is playing live music. Mm. Like you know, that. and there maybe in that there is some therapeutic outreach. Maybe in that, maybe that's my calling. Maybe there's, maybe that's mm-hmm. something I can do. I can't do a lot. I can't fix everybody's problems. Can't. But there's some things I can do. There's right. some things we can all do. And we, that's the if thing. If we all contribute so instead a little, of looking, it'll make a lot. Instead of taking this light and shining it on everybody else and being like, oh, you got problems. Right. How about we do Shine this and go, this. What, hey, what can I do to help the exactly. problem? Because it's just a sharing of information. Have, well, and not like only that, you. I have a daughter. Right. Other people's daughters and sons are plagued with this pandemic of drug abuse yes and addiction yes man. And how then, do we not how and, how can i call myself a human being how do i call myself a human being that wants to exist on the same plane with all these other people that i share so much with and i'm not going to step in and help right. when i have the opportunity i don't have a lot of time i have some time especially when you when you like because because you brought up the opens oh. when you know it's one of those things with, with the youth that is like pushed on there because if if you're young and they say you got ADHD they put you on Ritalin <clears throat> Ritalin by the time you get Adderall Adderall I was Adderall about to say Ritalin is, by the time you get to high school is now Adderall well and, Adderall and meth are so chemically similar it's the same thing well it's a molecule difference it's, it's, like, not, it's a but molecule it's, difference no but I mean but a molecule makes a huge difference yeah, yeah. I mean think but about it the you, difference between water and hydrogen and peroxide is and, one molecule and you're out of you can't drink hydrogen peroxide right. and they're like alright well yeah we we told you you have whatever we told you got and right. yeah we made you take these once or twice a day for however long you know whatever it is then you hit out of high school and all right you're not you you don't have to worry about being focused throughout the day anymore go out you don't worry you're yeah, not but prescribed you still anymore. get 90 adderall a month don't you you know what i mean and now you're like well what the fuck what do i do with this and you're like oh wait that's four bucks a pill so i can make me some cash the problem is we have developed societally we have developed not only an addict society, but a supplier society. Right. Yep. And, and that's that, not talked about enough. And no, it's not. Mm. It's not. It's because not. we we have developed between Vivance and Adderall and any of the benzodiazepines, mm-hmm. any of that sort of stuff. We have MVQ. developed not only a freaking addict society, but a supplier society. It's never been easier to score stuff you shouldn't want to score in your life than it is now. Oh, it's it's easier to score the shit than it is to go into a gas station underage and buy cigarettes and beer. Hell yeah, 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 hell yeah. No, absolutely, one hundred percent. But the yeah. problem, wow, the pro- But we don't we don't accept that as a society. We're more apt to throw stones at the people who will sit and drink and drown their sorrows. Mm-hmm. Than we are at the fact that our system is so screwed up right now that little Johnny Needle Dick can go over here Amen. and buy nine Xanax from Emily yep. and can buy 12 Adderall from Johnny yep. right. and then can go and buy benzodiazepines from Jeremy. And go back home with all of them. And go back home for 40 and bucks and be fuck fornicated the, in the Old Testament fashion. Yep. Suboxone. That's Suboxone or whatever. That thing... They give that to addicts, and it just makes them worse addicts. You know what I mean? They abuse. Well, and and the thing is, in every addiction and every addict is its like own thing, and that's the problem too. Is like, and we do not allocate funds in a way federally or statewide, or we're we're all failing. We're all failing, and we refuse to notice that and say that holy shit, we're failing. Mm, accountability, like you. We're not about. taking accountability for the mm. fact that societally we are failing people. Right. So hard we're failing there are people that are literally salvageable human beings that we are leaving in the dregs we're leaving them and for every mile of road there's two miles of ditches and we are leaving them in those ditches and we're not doing anything about it i don't know how to fix it but i know how to yell and bitch and moan about the problem and maybe that can get some grease because we got to fix the problem because it's my daughter's generation that is growing up saying one out of every three kids is going to be a freaking addict. That's not okay. That's no, not okay at all. Not. You know what I mean? That's and then you not have okay. All the other elements that go into it is like one out of every three kids is going to be an addict. 
and that's before they even hit 25. It's like so. So what's the lifespan look like then? Even 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 if you're an addict or if you're not, you're saying that you're in a society like this. So what is the overall lifespan look well, like? Well, it can't you know be. I mean? It like can't be as great. Crazy. And and the thing is, like life it's lifespan crazy. is lifespan is, is is part of it. But what about quality of life? Even more. So. What about quality of life? Because even lifespan so. is important. Mm-hmm. But a long life that's got shitty quality is a shitty life. You're right. Like and we have to offer opportunity. And and then here's where the major rub is. Here's where the major rub is. But the difference between uh, multiple parties and different, you know, thoughts, of, trains of thought, you know. Mm-hmm. So is it, is this a federal issue? Is this a government issue? Is this a state issue? Is it a right. municipality? Like, what is it? Uh, now, I think it's got to be, like, because honestly... If we're going to sit here and wait on our government to do something when the wheels turn that slow, Bruh. then we're going to literally pile bodies in a corner. Yes. That is morbid, and I realize that. But here's the thing. But this the truth. You know people. You know people. I know people. We have 30 minutes a day. Right. We have 30 minutes a day. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Definitely. Can we not be loud for 30 minutes a day about this? All right. Can we not find six other people like us to yeah. be loud for 30 minutes? The difference between three people and nine people is uh, this a trio. That's a damn choir. Right. How do we get loud about it? Who do we talk like? Because we need vision, leadership and somebody to point us in the right direction. Because mm-hmm. there's a the thing. Yeah, we'll do whatever we need to do. We don't know how to go about it. So how do we start to raise awareness? How do we find a person, a figurehead, somebody to get behind so that we can affect the change that needs to be affected locally, but also that's a national issue. It's a national national issue that is a little bit unique to the United States. Right. This is not a European issue. This is not an Asian issue. We created this issue because we overprescribe like a motherfucker. Dude. Kickbacks, it was for profit. It wasn't. Yeah, no, I get it. Big, yeah. pharma, big pharma is is the devil, but big pharma is the devil we know. Yes. How do we defeat the devil we know? Right. And it's. How do you defeat the devil that you know? It's one of those things, and, and that's the reason I'm gonna bring it on here is because. I've got this small platform. It's Dude, not a large gotta platform. Gotta start a dialogue, bro. Yeah. You gotta start and a this has got. It's got. I'm gonna use my platform just like we did for the, for the United Auto Workers. We're gonna do it for this addiction in our community, you know, and just give an option. Even if we don't reach the addict, we'll reach someone who knows an addict. If you haven't been aff- uh, affected by addiction. I don't know that you're paying attention. Yeah, what rock are you living under? Yeah, because I don't, I, I don't know that... There, there isn't anybody I know that hasn't been affected by addiction. Right. It's the right. same way as like my, like my platform, like my big thing, the thing that is tugs on my heart and like wrecks me every day is mental illness. Right. Because not only is someone who is afflicted with it, they give me a microphone four nights a week. Right. What kind of jackass am I? If I do not take that opportunity to talk about it. Right. Mm. And granted, like growing up, I I did idolize some people that were a, a little bit politically radical. The Ninas and the Bob Dylans and the Joni Mitchells. Right. You know what I mean? And I, I loved that. And the uh, George Clintons. You know, I, mm-hmm. I love these people who were not afraid to be the middle finger. Right. I don't want to be the middle finger. I want to be a voice of reason. Right. right. And also want, the index finger. That's kind of yes. what we what we were talking about. Because no, you know, you know what, what the middle the middle finger you're alienating a portion of your audience. Yes, but the, the, like I I need to do that, and and, and just you're like the way you're feeling understand. the need to do that, like how do we, like what 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 is it we do? Like I I think that's my thing is like I don't know the next step because I'm just a damn cook and a musician. I'm just the thing I am, but that right. doesn't make me less burdened or less moved just because I am what I am and I'm not a counselor and I don't have maybe the ears I need to have to make these moves wheel the, the these wheels move right, right you know I just I it needs to happen right I don't know how to make it happen but I know me being louder about it might help like, I mean what do we do what do we that, that's the conversation right what we can do what we can do we're all here on the platform right now what we can do is we can plan next year I hate to say next year, but, you know, it's cold right now. Unless we find a good indoor place, we can do a rally. We can do, you know what I mean? You're a musician. We promote. We market. We do do this. We can plan something just targeted for that. 
You know, that's how you do it. It's got to be, uh, whatever we do, it's got to be a safe place. And there has to be no condemnation, no judgment. And there's got to be, it's got to be hands behind your back or your arms wide open. Right. These people that are, as someone who has struggled previously, like you cannot, if any time you feel attacked or put into a, a, a space where you're uncomfortable. Right. Like, how do you even go there? You can't. Right. You know, like it has to be, everything has to be built out of love. Right. Again, and I think that love wins. I think love wins every single freaking time. It will. It is. So I think that that has to be. Love is the light. Well, I I mean, but that's the thing. It's all got to be done out of love. Yeah. It's all got to be, like, we got to figure that out. I I had an idea, but it was just an idea. And it was only, it was one of those things. My uh, friend just passed away from, um, from heroin. Uh, So it's just, I'm trying to figure out you know things to do or whatever since right. the funeral and all i got is a camera you know what i mean so i i started to do uh photos of black men smiling because black black guys always just we gotta look mean so mug, great. yeah, yeah no, the I mean mug so i was like well i'm gonna start just taking pictures of black men smiling right but on. the idea that i had for this because i have other friends that are addicts that uh i'm worried about um and the best idea I had was to just set them on a stool and do these things called confessionals, where I just set up like a camera or whatever. But it's just me and them talking, and they just tell me about you know what what got them there. What's what's my the main thing I want to ask is 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 when you look at your life, what would you what would you change about it? Like not not. That you would stop because some people yeah. don't want to stop. Some people can't don't even have the stop mindset. Stop ain't to, even an option. Exactly. Yeah. And I. But what would you change? Yeah. They even got to be that. What if it's I would change the relationship between me and my dad or whatever. You know what I mean? Like yeah. what other things? Because you're only doing this because there's Preach. something else that is really tearing you up. So if if you could change the main thing, you might not stop the drug, but you might calm down on it. Or you might be able to stop it. Eventually, you might be able to wing yourself off once it's that, that other thing. Or find another place. What was your passion previous? Exactly. And it's just this confessional thing where they just, just open talk. Up. Yeah, yeah, they just open up. And I don't and know the what to do is, with it. I don't know if the upload Well, here's the thing. Or, Sometimes, like, if you, can put, if you can put that on a tripod or something, you'd be surprised what silence can bring out of somebody. Right. Yeah. Silence is, like, I, there was this poet, man. I'll never forget this. I was like 19 years old. I was in Baton Rouge. And there was this beat poet named Zero hmm. in Baton Rouge. And he was this, he was this mulatto cat from... And, it, and I'm not using that in a bad way. Where I'm from, there's a lot of... Yeah. Everybody Bounce. has kids with everybody else. So, like, <laughs> we all look a little different, okay? Some people... There's whole towns that are, like, so high yellow, they, like, glow in the dark. Right. You know what I mean? And I... Yeah. That's just a thing, you it's know? There's a lot of... That's Louisiana. A yeah. lot of like, like I didn't know Redbone was like a bad phrase to say. It is. <laughs> no, it could be a fa- no, it could be really offensive. I didn't realize that. Yeah. I've never met a Redbone that that didn't like being called a Redbone. <laughs> I've come across real... many Redbones, and they all knew they were before I got there. Look, Jay Powell, <laughs> Jay Powell chimed in. He said, uh, "You all should contact the Murray County Prevention Coalition. They're doing a lot with battling local addiction. I love Even some started Powell, a church for addicts last year. Said they're good people. That's dope. Yeah, thank so. you, Jay. Jay's you. Jay is like literally so solid. Oh, I know. Always Jay. shows up. Okay, good guy. Um, no, stellar guy. Yeah, stellar I don't know guy. you, Jay, good, but I fuck Good writer, you, too. Good writer, man. Yeah, hey, uh, is, is he still writing with the, with the, the Herald? Herald? Yeah, yeah, man. As so far when as I I'm worked aware. at the Herald. You want to do editorial on us, Jay? <laughs> think, about, think about Jay, though. Jay is literally like um, if Columbia had a Hunter Thompson, a Hunter S. Thompson, it, Ooh. Would, it would be Jay Powell. Jay, you uh, need to do editorial on us, bro. No, you need like <laughs> perfect. What you, what you need to do if you want to meet Jay. You go, you go, and you see a show. Go and see a music. Go see music with Jay. Right. Okay. And then afterwards, go and have a couple of pints with Jay. Does he, does he have good music taste? Jay has great music. Yeah. Jay is all over the map. All right. All Jay right. loves cool. everything from heavy metal to like holy amazing funk. All, all right. right. And Jay's nice. a damn good guitar player. Under you're an underrated guitar player, you bastard. Um, <laughs> but no, he's a great guitar player too. And like, but go and talk with him. And he's Jay is one of those dudes. You're like. Dude, how old are you? How do you know this much shit? Mm. You know, so he's a great, great, great hang. Great yeah. hang. And he's also like, 
he's got this kind of sardonic little sense of humor uh, where you're like I'm not sure if you're an asshole or if you're just really cool yeah so it takes you about three hangs with him when you're like this dude's hilarious he's hilarious you know because at bro. first you're just like I'm are you the same kind of asshole I am because I, I think you're my, you know what I mean <laughs> but like you along. hang out and then you're like oh I freaking love this guy you know Jay has, yeah. Jay has been a um significant boon to me as an artist and yeah. I really appreciate the dude. Um, That's what's up. Yeah, we worked at the Herald yeah. together and they had just hired Jay. So it was it was really interesting. Like I, I hadn't been there too too long, but I had been there a little bit longer than he had. Mm -hmm. And it was just, you know, watching him ride and we we went through a couple different stories at the time that uh were kinda interesting. Um when uh the Cantrell shooting was one of them, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, it was a lot that went on there for a little bit, and it, it was interesting. He's a nice guy. He's a nice guy. He's, He's solid dude. Yeah. Solid dude. If I write an editorial about uh, the the drug epidemic, can you get it published? <laughs> Come on, Jay. <laughs> Make it happen. <laughs> out of the out of the three, the one that doesn't know you're asking for favors. Hey, yeah, yeah hey, <laughs> hey, you, hey, bro. Man. No, like, man, I, I, I wouldn't. I would definitely encourage you to sit down and have have a pint with him. I'm with that. He's because he's a super heavy local guy, like as in supports his local businesses, shows up at all the places yeah, and where the community. He's a huge right. community guy. Um, so if you are ever anywhere that is a, a a local place, no matter race, color, or creed, Jay is. Yeah, he's down. Jay's down. Yeah. He's, oh man, I need to take him to Omega's Market then. Uh, he may have already been there. I don't Probably. know. When I when I when I was at the Herald, I need to, yeah, yeah. like no, Jay's down, dude. He's down. He's he like it's surprisingly, and I don't mean that in a bad way. But, <laughs> but like, still, like still I'm usually surprising. the only white boy that's down, right? You know what I right. mean. So I always feel like, well, I look like a grain of rice and a pot of black beans. <laughs> yeah. Then you this. look over like I'm like hell. Jay's here. Yeah. <laughs> here, you go. here, Jay will show up in a in a damn David Bowie shirt or an Anthrax shirt, <laughs> right, right? And his jeans and boots and just be a absolutely jay and yeah, it works. I, I well i like people who are secure in what they are he knows what he mm -hmm. is and he's a cool dude man jay said uh he does have a column or he said he can rock the mic with us anytime hey both i would them. bring jay in i would yeah, definitely jay, bring jay, jay in like, jay would come be, on the show and let me write in a column <laughs> jay will jay's column journalist. like you should hey go back flip through the daily herald archives read some of his stuff man because he's yeah. huge huge music supporter as he is a musician but he's done a lot to shine light on like local musicians um sick. he's also huge in the local art scene yeah. he's um he, he and, has to come to shut up in ink I, then, right? yeah. he probably would he's got great tattoos he's got the coolest fucking edgar Allan poe tattoo i've ever seen in my has life edgar Allan poe tatted on him yes fucking does. jay you fucker yeah, we're dude. friends <laughs> no, he's, got a, dude, he's got a huge He's got a huge Poe tattoo on his arm, and it's my favorite poet of all time. Dude, Poe is underrated, and po. can we say that Poe is underrated as a satirist because yes. he's funny as hell? He's funny as shit. That's yeah, why. I, that's why I figured out what dark humor was because I was the only one in class yeah. giggling. I was like, you're like, this dude's hilarious. This right? <laughs> he's hilarious. <laughs> he really makes you question if you might be fucked up in the head because I never questioned it. I knew I was. <laughs> Like when I went to uh, see the Joker, right? And, uh, and you know, I told you I, I was laughing, but nobody else was, and I was like, "All right, am I?" But uh, well, that's because you're the Joker. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm, yeah. I'm giggling, and it had me thinking that everybody else has been here before. Like y'all, the artist, this is your second viewing of the movie or some shit. So I'm yeah. laughing, I'm giggling my ass off. And nobody else is, and the entire fucking theater is just me. And it made me feel like with Edgar Allan Poe, like we we we'll all be reading it, and it yeah. might be somebody's turn to read the little stanza, and, you're and, and I'm the only one that's like, <laughs> ah! no one got that, like nobody. Right. The Telltale Heart is hilarious to me, dude. The Telltale Heart's like um, literally the father, the father of the uh, American detective story. Yes. Well, Thank no, you. actually, take it back. Cask of Amontillado. Uh, yeah. The Cask of Amontillado. Telltale Heart is is pure thriller, mm -hmm. but a uh, Cask of Amontillado is the is considered to be the father of the great American detective story. Mm. Yeah, I'm nerd alert. Oh. Um, oh. <laughs> no, but it's uh no, but uh, back on back on the addiction thing though, like something has to be done. I don't know the answers. I don't have the but that's, answers. That's awareness, the right there. awareness. But aware, but here's but wait, the thing. I think we just we, we got just a trumpet. Tackle some of it, because Poe, somebody who, who had opium, op opium, uh. and meant clear mental issues. But he found somewhat of an escape through writing. So if you were to even get 
a writing collective together to where it was just like a, a workshop of people to just come down writing or write, painting or, or anything. anything and any, the, the like, thing wait, is wait, we have a whole arts building y'all maybe we need Columbia to talk arts, to them well i'm gonna tell you i will i will say this and i mean this so sincerely there is not a better place there's not a better place for arts engagement of the arts mm -hmm. and people that will stand up and support the community artistically than the Columbia Arts Building. Mm -hmm. I mean that like everyone there, Holly, like mm -hmm. everybody the, at the cafe with uh, Frank is amazing at the cafe. They have a, a thrift store there with, with yeah. Glover's Place is amazing. But also too. Bloomstall, like everywhere in there, Salvage Darling, it's a bunch of small stuff. They have a brewery there as well. Yep. But And they do jujitsu and yoga Upstairs and kickboxing. And, like, and dancing. And, and everything. But the thing is, like the whole purpose of the place is a unification of arts. Mm -hmm. And I believe, just from the people that I know, that they sincerely deeply on a very like m almost molecular level believe that art is a healing thing yes so i believe that if with the right approach yes. and, and talking to the people there i think it's something we could work out i think it's something that could happen there even if we did like paint therapy is amazing yeah. mm. i Mm -hmm. I just I think we like let's look let's look let's let's, let's go try. through all the variables let's filter until we find the right thing but mm -hmm. I mean I well I don't think there will be one thing because there's going to so be many different. things yeah but as long as the try. outlet is there well, well, let's let's shoot yeah it, it, what do they say the shoot you know shoot for the moon at least if you miss you end up amongst the stars exactly and, you know let's and with something like this like just shoot just keep on shooting just. Yeah. Keep on trying, like you said. One life in a month is is worth it. So if you do well, a writer's thing and you do a painter's thing and you do a musician's thing, and and out of those three, one person like you know what? I found an outlet. I found a way to to get whatever was inside of me bugging me and pulling me down and anchoring me. Well, just something, to this, something yeah. to connect to. The thing is, if yes. there's something you can latch onto, because that's the thing is initially with addiction you latch onto it mm -hmm. and then later you realize it's latched onto you yeah it starts off as this Do you have kind control? of symbiotic thing and it ends up being so parasitic right you know uh, uh, initially you grab onto it and it's this codependency and then pretty soon it's the parasite and it's leeching and it's yeah. it's illness it is not yes. This is not a character flaw. This is no. not a defect. No. It's it's disease in its purest form. Do you feel like it's a genetic trait? I think it can be. I yeah. think I think that science has proven it to be genetically more um, prevalent in some people, especially okay. with alcoholism. Right. Yeah. Well, it's, let me let me tell a story. Give me just a minute no, here to tell you, the man. story. I'm gonna get some of that lemonade, you guys. Okay, gonna, that's cool. So, you okay? yeah, you're yeah. good. You're good. Uh, there's some fruit punch in there too, brother. <laughs> yeah, I got fruit punch too. I don't. I don't have no grapefruit. We drank it all. It's gone. Oh, thank you, man. So, the the story I have is of I know two brothers. Okay, and this is this goes into genetic addiction. I, I believe in it because I know two brothers. One of them is your typical addict, okay? Mm. Uses everything like that. But drug addict, I would say. But the other brother, he never got into drugs through viewing what it did to this brother. But I would watch this guy. He would, let's say he ate a lasagna, okay? Mm. And he loved it, like a Stouffer's. Right. He would oh. go a week eating Stouffer's lasagna. Only. Only. What or if he enjoyed an activity, he would go like day after day after day. Just doing that. Yes. That same activity he enjoyed. You know, he was addicted to, mm. he, he wouldn't eat unless he was eating with someone else. And he would go and do that. So in my mind, I'm looking like, okay. He you found another outlet for his his addiction it was i feel like that addictive trait yeah was a a real thing a genetically real thing because he had never tried drugs right he knew not to try drugs from his brother All right but he also still displayed addictive 
traits. traits. Yes. So that's what made me believe. I completely agree with you because. What's up, man? Fruit punch or lemonade? Oh, lemonade. Fruit punch or lemonade? Lemonade is always. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm evidence of, of it. Right. Because my dad was a was a heroin addict and well is a heroin addict. Uh I don't know. But yeah, um whatever. So <clears throat> I've had issues with, with, with addiction myself when it came to pills and um and uh and lean. Yeah. Yeah. And so it like lean was real bad, but lean is very expensive, like to keep up and and so I was just like pills were really, really bad. But instead when you have to catch those addictive like characteristics you have, like I would instead of like trying to if somebody tries to quit smoking, they right. start eating a lot. I would try to stop doing pills and I would get on the video game a whole lot. So then I like I don't have a video game console now. I just have the Call of Duty or mobile. Right. Like, it's just something you know what I mean. Occupy your time. Exactly. But I don't have a video game console because it's just I have the a, a, the addictive personality. That that would just jump on it. I'll stay on it and I'll be on it for four days. Right. I don't have uh I don't watch sports anymore. Right. Because I'll get obsessed with sports, like with a certain team or like a, a certain player. Right. And I'll just I'll spend fucking four days. Like I've literally studied Allen Iverson for like all everything from like autobiography book to the documentary to looking at old plays to, right like and you get into it so now i don't watch sports anymore like i try to like as soon as i find something i just ah, i need it i try thank you very much get it away because i know that that's only a part of like the trait right that just i'm finding something to take up all my time right so i just started doing hobbies i'm, I'm gonna learn how to make clothes i'm gonna I write poetry. I'm gonna uh, uh, make music. I'm gonna do photography. I'm gonna go boxing. I'm gonna do something that is a productive way for me to utilize the addictive personality traits I already have. Right. And because anything else that'll just take away from my time, like it'll truly take my time. I right. have to stop. And watching. time is something you cannot buy, rent, no, for real, nothing. It is the most valuable for resource. Real. Yeah, well, almost, what we say earlier. Man. And yeah. that's what let, got Absolutely. me to figure it out, like about the time. I almost overdosed it, and I was just like, I almost missed out on a lot, like just from time of what's to come in the future. It was like I almost missed out on a lot. I just had a kid, you know what I mean, like my first son, and I was just like, wow, I need to figure this out, you know what I mean. So I just started figuring everything that passionately, creatively gave me my food, you know what I mean, that yeah. filled me up. It feeds that you. I just be, it just became my hobbies now. Right. Like so, I might go to work and like, what you do when you get off? I I have to name four or five things. That's why when you came in, I was like, busy's a blessing, because I know me. If I sit around yeah. and I, my mind will get the you know idle minds devil playground. Right. My mind will get in a dark space fast, and then all of a sudden I want something to make me feel happy, and I ain't got nothing to do with. So you got to find something. You know what I mean? So I got to yeah. keep hobbies. It's it's a double edged sword because it like a it, motherfucker. I think at some point, you know, it's it is healthy in a way to sit in it, mm. but you have to have the strength to sit there. To sit there, yeah. Like sometimes, like I, I know with a lot of emotions and a lot of feelings, with with guilt and shame, um, I found that for me, it's it's um, for a short period of time or a short window, it's really healthy for me to sit in that. Mm. And like um, sit in it and really like own it mm. and like really be present to those feelings, whether they're negative, positive or indifferent, um, Being but not, but not give myself too large a window because I can find a way to put a lot of blame that might not, I end up carrying water. That's not mine to carry, ah. but I do think it's important to like part of self-awareness and self-accountability is owning your bullshit too, right. mm -hmm. you know? And so sometimes being busy is a way to ignore it. And like you're keeping your, your hands busy. Yeah. And so that your mind doesn't have to think about some of the things you may or may not need to think about. Um, that's definitely my, my, my out. <laughs> no, but I mean, it, and it's not, there's not a right or a wrong. There's just life, mm. you know? And the thing is the most important part, if you're somebody who is, well, hell, alive, whether you're struggling with things or not, I think the most important thing is 
what do I need to do to see tomorrow? Yes. And how do I put myself in a position that tomorrow can be better than today? Like for me, that that's my existence is I need to see tomorrow. You need to see tomorrow. You know, with the, with the stuff that I deal with, I, let me get to tomorrow. And what's the important part about tomorrow? So first off that I prioritize seeing tomorrow and then, for, but that's what works for me. That might not work for everybody. Right. For me, it's like, I need to see tomorrow. And that's like my huge, bold, underlined twice in italics, all of that. And then under that, they're kind of like sub titular things that, that I'm also like, okay, what am I doing? Like, how do I get to see tomorrow? And then what am I going to do to make sure that I'm that kind of father I need to be for my kid? Mm -hmm. Then what do I need to do to be this or this, you know, and then there's, but I'm prioritizing it, but I can't fill up. And the thing is like, I think the three of us are, are very akin or very, very common in the way that we really actually get a lot out of being that person for other people showing up, helping, moving things, putting things in alignment so that other people are able to be the best version of themselves. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Where people like us often come up awake at three o'clock in the morning and lamenting their very existence is because we're trying to fill other people's buckets and ours is empty. Yeah. Right. So I know for me in particular, I'm not sure about y'all. I'm really bad about confusing self care with selfishness. Right. You know, and, and easy to, to well, that's, that line. but it's a, it, it is addict mentality in a lot of way too. And it is depressive mentality. It is anxious mentality. It is, uh, a mental illness mentality and it's also indicative of our our society too though that we exactly. definitely think that self-care is selfish yes um yes. and it's there there's a lot of religiosity there too though if you grew up in the church like that's vain that's not okay right you know and if you, you grew up in the to. church the way that i grew up like oh whoa 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 that's not okay it's not all right you, you're, no. you're here for the service of others yeah, but and I can't you fill gotta, your bucket if mine's empty. Exactly, and then they don't. It's but but Matthew seven twelve, you know. Golden rule: treat others. Like do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Mm-hmm. If only I, the, the, it was the others would do. Yeah, <laughs> without reciprocation, that's a Drain. that equation does not balance no. right and we're chemical beings you end up self-destructing we're chemical beings we're literally a really awesome computer in a meat casing mm-hmm. we're just a meat skeleton we're literally just a meat casing we're a biological r- computer yeah we're just a really really awesome piece of meat that's driven by a pretty awesome computer you know yeah but if we don't, like, <laughs> software updates are important, man. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, software like, you updates. can't click on close, you know, oh, close, tell me again at 5 p.m. tomorrow. You can't keep doing that. Sometimes you need to shut it down and reset the whole damn Android, man. Yeah. And get, the, yeah. get it back on yeah. track. Yeah. That's iOS true. update, baby. Yeah. That's true. You know? Hey, yo, that's a gem right there. I hope y'all picked that one up, polish it off, put it in your pocket. That was... Sometimes you need to, you just need to update your software, sit and sit down for a little bit. Right. Can't. Well, and, and here's the thing, you're not a bad person for taking care of yourself. No. And that's what people really. Well, the problem is we. That's, that's where weird. I struggle. Yo. Because oh my god, if I can't help them right now, and also no is an acceptable answer. Yes. I mean, mm. yes, but no, but yeah, no, yes, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no is an acceptable answer. Yeah. If someone asks you to do something that you don't want to do, feel uncomfortable doing, or have no interest in doing it, it doesn't serve anything but them. No is an acceptable answer. Golly. Yeah, like that's these are the things that like I'm trying to deal with and struggling with right now. I'm not yourself. saying that like oh I've got this figured out. This is the trick. No, no, this is my bullshit that I'm dealing with right now going, oh, it's okay to tell somebody no. You can't call me 45 minutes before a gig and want me to drive to Franklin and play a gig. Right. No, no. is an acceptable answer. That's, that's especially true. Especially for subpar money. Do I love playing music? Yes. More than anything. But you gotta... But do can I do that and present what I do in a way 
That is the way that, that it is, is meant the, to be presented. That, how am I going to not leave there feeling like bullshit? Right. Exactly. When you show up and you know you're forcing it. Not only that, and I show I don't have time. I need to be in the venue for a certain amount of time. I got to get all my angles. No, no, no. Yeah. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. So, the battles that you've had, I'm sure that you put it into your music and your writing. I'm sure that's... Yeah, I'm pretty transparent with that stuff. Right. Uh, and, and, and I think um, both deliberately and um, I think unconsciously. Right. So, guys, if you haven't... If you haven't listened to Damien Boggs and, you know, you want to relate, you want to relate to someone who's been through some things. Oh, my God. It's, it's so yeah, good. you definitely we need talk about to you check it out. Show. You've got some stuff they, on Spotify. They know how I feel. I don't really love what's on Spotify right now. Um, don't change it. There, well, I'm working on that. <laughs> uh, there are some older records. Yeah. Um, we're going to be re-releasing uh, an EP that I did um, recently called the Pointless Love EP. We'll be releasing that and putting that out on digital platforms here right. in probably next month, month and a half. Okay. Please All keep right. us updated. We'll be yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, everything. I do a lot of shows. Um, not as much here locally as, as I had been doing. Uh, well, but I mean, I will, you got to expand. Yeah. But I will be. Well, I mean, but own your backyard. Yeah. You know? Own your backyard yeah. first. Like, mm. you're going to be a... Like, you, do you feel like you don't own your backyard? Because I feel like you do. No, I just... I don't, I don't know that there are places that are... I, I, there are places I can play now, but the type of show I do is, uh, I, I'm thinking outside of the box for some stuff here in Columbia. Let me know. Cause we're some outside the thinking some bitches we'll go. Real. Yeah. No, yeah. I just, because we, we, we have is. lost, right. we, we, we've lost a couple of venues. Um, Shit. and, and the newer venues are going to, um, you know, there, there, there's always that feeling out process. So I'm doing yeah. a lot more Franklin and Nashville shows, which That's are okay. great hit the road a little bit but I, I love Columbia and I want to play Columbia as much as possible right um, uh, and Columbia has always been like crazy good at supporting me so I'm super thankful um, I just think it's uh, you know it's a it's it's tricky you know you want to own your backyard but like you gotta you gotta be careful like that you don't build a fence around that backyard don't ah, box yourself man. in. Yeah. Well, I mean, you want to own your backyard, but like, you need a gate. You know, you still have to leave. Right. Like, because you always want to be able to come back home. Right. Exactly. Like they always say, you yeah. can't go back home. Yeah. I don't believe that. I think it's bullshit. Um, I think you can go back home if you leave good. If you leave on good terms. If right. You leave on good times. Exactly. Well, I mean, but we all I'm understand. Not I'm not going anywhere. Right. I'm still going to be Columbia, proud as hell. Right. You know, which is so weird because when I moved here, I was in Nashville, but. Uh, Columbia was a really important part about it was really important in building me kind of as a, as a writer and that's why I me, stay that's why know? I stay here like I want to mm-hmm. stay I want to build this community I want to help be a part of that hell I want it to build me yeah Man. like that's the thing y'all they're, got a finite amount of time with my black ass I'm moving to Africa it is, so, um, it is. <laughs> y'all got a finite amount of time I'm well I'm, I'm gonna send you a Richard Pryor and an Eddie Murphy sketch about Africa <laughs> yeah. start all that hot ass <laughs> Africa talk Lord, <laughs> Lord of War or whatever that movie and that's that, what he keeps trying to remind yeah. of Nicolas Cage like, yeah, Lord, you remember that uh, or Jamie Foxx has good skits about Africa too <laughs> a foxhole man Af- look yeah. here's the thing yeah absolutely cradle of life Yep. <laughs> Maybe visit, bro, but you, <laughs> Maybe visit. you better keep your P.O. box. You know what I'm, like, I'm just saying, like, here's, you know what I love about Columbia, man? I, I, I work with the public and I cook and I make coffee and I make drinks. And, and, I, and I, I do like the fact that I can offer people a really cool thing. Like outside of my music life, just in my I cook, I make drinks life. Right. I love that I can see somebody at 6.07 in the morning. And they ain't ready to talk to people because it's six oh seven in the, the morning. morning. Yeah. I can see them, and they don't have to use their words yet. And I can look at them and say, "Just nod at them. I know what kind of latte they want. Right. And I can take care of them. Right. Like that's the beauty of a small town. Like the the beauty of a small town is regulars. Right. And it's really being able to treat people the way that every human being wants to be treated when they go to a business. Right. Like when you go somewhere and you get treated like you've been coming there for 20 years. It like, makes you feel special. 
Well, and, feel, and shouldn't you feel special? Everybody wants to go to a place where everybody knows their name. And everybody wants cheers, like, right? <laughs> exactly. Like, but, I mean, that, cheers, but that's like, not that's not a, an anachronism, man. That's not like a overstatement. Like, who doesn't want to feel great? You go in somewhere and somebody remembers your order. They remember your name. They call you by your name. You feel cared about. They make it's your drink exactly like the way that you want it. They make your food exactly how you want it. And I know they don't like tomatoes. I'm not going to put tomatoes on there. <laughs> right, right, right. And you take care of them. You bring their food out to them, plate it in a way that's beautiful. Right. And exactly it's what an they art. want. It's See, an art. boom, you drop that off and you just look at them and you smile. And you know that you've done an amazing job. And their next 45 minutes is going to be so much better because you cared enough to do a great job. Right. Yeah, yeah. What kind of vocation would you not want to do that in? Right. It's and I think the same approach applies it's to playing like music, to taking pictures, mm-hmm. all of that. When somebody sees a preview of the picture, whether it's matching sweaters, honky McGee, freaking family yeah, photos or whatever. Right. That that light that hits them. Yeah, and they that, gl- but here's the thing. When she is super happy about that, you did the you played the gig you were paid to play. Right. You did the you did your do, job. 10 out of 10 you you got like you hit that flag and you got three stars you pulled the lever like <laughs> yeah. super mario 3 you got the raccoon tail the whole shit hey, yeah, 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 yeah 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 man Who like you just out? yeah you you did the work right and the thing is it's not easy to do stuff you don't want to do right no. it is not i don't like making substitutions on a menu that i helped with right because i created that dish a certain way because it tastes a certain way and don't why you well, you want what? With you? what you but want? here's the thing. my At the end of the day, my job is to make sure that person leaves super happy. Right. Okay. We can do that. I like that. I just want to take that to every interaction I have. And if, if people... Like if they leave gig, better than they, they were... When they got to me. Yeah, man. Shout out to Miss Moore at Central High School. She taught me that. that, that yeah, you know, man. So. Leave no footprints, right? Leave no footprints. That's a Boy Scout thing, right? Some real shit. I didn't know that was some uh, Boy Scout stuff. That's uh, another teacher, Mr. Walker, used to say that to me. Leave no footprints. Mr. Walker was was definitely probably a Boy Scout. Yeah. (laughs) Leave no footprints. I mean, that's the thing. Like, if you can leave where you're at in whatever iteration, if you can leave where you're at better than it was when you got there, that's real work. That's a. And in, in, in a big term, that's a that's a life lived it uh but properly yes. but think about the artists you love think about like if you think about one artist you love all right i got it think about one artist you love Johnny a- cash. A- after hearing them is your life better than it was before yes be- johnny cash enhanced my life yeah it's yes. better than previously yes lauren hill Better. Yes. Because can we please? Oh. Can we talk about that unplugged? Ver- that, <laughs> yeah. Can we like? Because that is some that's some grown folks gospel stuff. You better get your life right. Because she went so spiritual on that when she, she hit so that. Spiritual. When she hit oh Jerusalem, yeah. <laughs> I said Lord, I had to pull over. I said, oh. <laughs> who knew you could have church in a Toyota Yaris? Right. right, you know right. I, mean? <laughs> I knew you could have church right. in, in an Accord, and I said there's more, more than one. A, yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, oh, Jesus talking about Hondas. He was, yeah. he was prophetic. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> no, but I, man, it's like, look, live. I like that you mentioned church, though. That, no, church is huge you, for me. Are you gonna listen to the new Kanye West album, the gospel album? I'm going to listen to it because it's something I need to listen to. Right. Mm. I'm on the fence on it. I know that he's been having his, the big church that he has. If you listen to the Joe Rogan podcast, they talk about how loud that is out there. Yeah. Right. And and here's my thing. It's not my place to judge Kanye West for doing whatever he wants to do. And if we're going to be fully honest, listen to the college dropout record. That dude put gospel on regular radio with Jesus Walks. Damn. Way before anybody else did. That yeah. was a gospel song. It just had swear words in it. That's right, it. right. You're going to tell me Jesus Walks wasn't a gospel song? You're going to tell me that wasn't a gospel song? You're going to tell me Ray Charles this. didn't play gospel too? Right. Next, after you're going to tell me next? All right, yeah, okay. Most people don't remember this, but when the college dropout first came out, Jesus Walks 
had to get taken down from the gospel categories for awards. Right, right. It did. I do remember yeah. that. Even I do remember that. Because they had that. it on there with the clean mix. No, it was up for it was up for Dove Awards. Yeah. And it was up for BET Gospel Awards, yep. too. Yeah. Hey, yep. shout out to Rebecca. She just joined watching. This is the lady that we're going to have on that's going to do the do the counseling. Hey, oh, fantastic. Rebecca, yeah. how you doing? Can't yeah. wait to meet you. Yeah. 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 to talk about. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah. so... So no, was, I'll I'll listen to it though. Just to, yeah, I, I, I listen to. I'll it. probably buy the blue vinyl too, just because I'm that dude. Yeah, right. yeah. Dude, it's good. You can though. tell by the beard. It's good though. Yeah. It's like it's 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 good. You would think that Kanye plus gospel, you're gonna expect a few things. He does he doesn't do it a disservice. Though. It doesn't matter. We're created by a creator. Yeah, he's a creative person. Very true. Well, and also yeah. let's let's just not. Some of his I, creativity goes left. This one didn't. Yeah. yeah, well, you know, Jesus. It, like, oh, it, he's a master marketer. A lot of people don't realize that. Well, it's master not not only that, man. He's he's super smart in a way, and he also has, in, like, the most ridiculous disposable. If I want to turn a record around in three weeks, bro, come on, I'm gonna mm -hmm. be selling kidneys and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> right. Like, there's no way, you know. Right, but he right, has, right. at his disposal, he can do anything he wants. Anything. So if he doesn't, then here's the thing too. Whether it goes left or right or whatever, dude never stops moving the needle. No. Exactly. And and this is going to be, people are going to be so pissed when I say this, but it's very, very similar to David Bowie. Mmm. It's very similar to Bowie. the needle? Well, just the fact he's, that he's, he's never David the same. Bo David Bowie is one of his biggest inspirations. Well, that's where he got his name, was from the Ziggy Stardust cover. David Bowie is standing under a sign that says K period West. It's where Kanye came up with his name. Wow. Whoa. Wow. Yeah. So, no, he gets it. He did his work, his homework. He's a historian, music historian. He knows what he's doing. My thing is, um, yeah, he knows what he's doing. It's all calculated and deliberate. He's not yes. dumb. Yeah, and that's what I do. We had this conversation earlier before like when you got he talk, here. Like when he did the whole wire, jaw wired shut thing. Yeah. Nobody else would have done that, but he did it because it moved the needle. Yes. Didn't make him rap better or nope. rap worse. Nope. Didn't it make just... him rap a little worse, but who else was going to ever do that? Yes. Like, nobody did it before. Nobody's done it after. Rapping right. with the jaw wired shut. Wired just, shut. was just different. It just was, it well, was such that, a, he was, he's previous to that, he was considered a genius producer by Jay-Z, by oh, Nas, yeah. by so many people. He was getting the paper. He, he was. was getting paid before that. Mm -hmm. Not only that, like, ask Questlove about Kanye. Oh, yeah. All he wants to talk about is Kanye Tudor from the early days. Yeah. He, because he loves it. Yeah, because he's good at what he does. And here's the thing. As a society, we've got to figure out a way to separate art from the artist. And we don't do that now because we of don't do it because media. of social media and exactly. because of the the gross amount of coverage that's available to us that wasn't previously. Right. Roman Polanski is one of the greatest filmmakers that ever freaking lived. Does it make him not a pervert? No, no. he's a pervert, like, <laughs> yeah. bastard, like a one way bastard. Yes, but that doesn't make a knife if in you the water. Put a camera in his hands and, and tell him Dude, to set up a scene. Go watch a knife in the water. <laughs> go watch a knife in the water. A and then tell me that one. dude is not a genius. It's one of his early one. films. It is ridiculous. Black and white shot. The entire freaking thing outside of two scenes takes place on a yacht with a married couple and a young boy they bring on is like a cabin boy. It is freaking stunning. It's brilliant. It's upsetting. And it's visceral. And it's just like this whole holy shit moment. Uh -huh. it's, it's amazing. It's, right. it's amazing. But... That's art. It's real art. It doesn't make excuses. It right. doesn't make. There's no pretense. Right. It's just amazing. So just I'm gonna is. jump in right here, because we're at a time. We're at two hours and fifteen minutes. We've been talking. For yeah. Two, we've been yes. On this video. And, and I want to give them. I know. I know. Yeah. I want to yeah. give them a little taste of your music before we oh, have hell. to go. So I guess just, I gotta play, huh? You 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 don't have to now. I'm your yeah. buddy. I ain't gonna make you play. <laughs> I, make, I, I go buddy. I go get a track from Spotify and play for him if we got to. <laughs> Brandon will make me play. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm over here, please. <laughs> so um, and the way we usually do this, uh, you're to be our second musical guest. Is we just kind of give you the floor here. We can direct these mics where they need to. They pick up great, and we're gonna take the couch. 
you can just run down and, and give us a song or two. And then can I just request my, the song? I'm going to play Pointless Love. <laughs> Do you really think I was going to play something else? Yeah. <laughs> Everyone enjoy. Yeah, oh, it's, uh, it's funny. You, you, you actually thought I was going to play something else? <laughs> I just want to so, say yeah, that. Guys, guys, um, I don't know if you have plans on it. I think this is how this is going to go down. This is uh, Damien Boggs. Oh, He's going to play for us here for a minute. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> you want to sit down? You want a chair? You want oh. a stool? Or what you want? No, man, I'll just stand right in front of him and get him. You just want to stand? Yeah. My dad always said if you sit down, you ain't working. Oh, yeah. hold on. Let me uh, let me readjust this center camera then. Let me see if this is going to be good. <laughs> Look at Brandon. That's a shame right there. I'm close enough for the girls we date. <laughs> stretch them out. Hey, Brandon, you want to stretch yours out a little bit? <laughs> Right, I'm gonna get out of your way, uh, ladies and gentlemen. This is uh, Damien Boss. Damien Boss. He's gonna play for you guys. Here. Oh God! Just a little bit. Take us, take oh, us God. to another place, real quick. I don't even fucking so. understand. Let's <laughs> hope I still got it, man. I played a long time last night. Yeah. How's the OPO meters look? Okay. <laughs> Hold on. Let me move it down just a little bit. I got a main one here. Playing this because you want me to. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if I have any gas left in the tank, right? Uh -huh.
the whole rest of the day. <laughs> you don't even understand. Now, Sweet. which one was that off of? Uh, that's off the record, the unreleased one. It's okay. coming up. It's uh, that's the title track for the uh, record that will be out in about forty-five days. What is that record called for the guests? Pointless Love. Pointless Love. The Pointless Love EP. That's the title track for it. kind of a newer one I haven't recorded this yet but it's uh, it's got a kind of a cool title it's called uh, Things We Do For Love and Other Failed Attempts At Flight and Other Failed Attempts At Flight this is the whole name yeah it's kind of a long title <laughs> Things We Do For Love and Other Failed Attempts At Flight yeah alright Said now I'm praying, baby, baby, it's raining. I ain't the fool thinking about you and crying again. And I need you to know. Behind the lights of this side show, I want you to see what's underneath before you walk away. And I need you to hear what I say. Again, I'd push till I break at the bend. I tear the moon from the sky to defend if it means I get you. If it means I get you. Say that love is eternal Although some say infernal Go on, make me a match Strike me till I turn black And let's just watch this whole thing burn I need you to hear what I say I'd push till I break at the bed Tear the moon from the sky to defend If it means I get you If it means I get you If it means I get you We're being honest, I ain't much My fault line is deep and wide I got a feeling I'm gonna be alright I got a you by my side And oh Lord, I do the whole thing again Push till I break at the bed Tell the moon from the sky to defend If it means I get you If it means I get you, yeah 
If it means I get you I'm praying, maybe, baby, it's raining, and I ain't some fool, thinking about you, and crying again. Come on, brother. That was fucking amazing. So, Damien, could you godly give us just a just a melodic tune on the way out? Just something? You got something? Ding, ding, just, ding, just, just a little strum as we strum say as goodbye we... to our guests. Here, come sit down. Uh -huh. You ain't working no more. <laughs> just, uh... my bread in the I love yeah. it. Yes. I love it. All right, all our uh, who daddians, who daddians, <laughs> yeah. Thank you again for tuning in for another week uh, on aboard the, the spaceship. Um, for B, this is me, for Paco, Captain Demario, and the whole SS Who That podcast uh, legion of, of faculty. Yeah. Thank y'all. It's more than just us that makes this happen every week. So yes, yeah, yes. you may see us, but we got people doing voice acting. We got guests, Damien himself. Yes, you know Big people like that. Though, people time. watching. Whoop, whoop. All you guys, y'all, y'all, what makes this happen and what makes it good, you know. So um, November 9th Damien Boggs be at the Shut Up and Ink. That's it's right across from Big Wash the Bish Wall, Big Wash Tub. Hatch Lane. So. Hatch That's Lane, November 9th. Lane, Tennessee, uh, 38401. Put it in your GPS. It'll take you straight to us. Boom. You know? So thank you this week for everybody tuning in. And uh, thank you, Damien, for coming on. He told us to open up, tell us a little about himself, you know? And a little, you got a little flavor of what he's playing, what he's serving, the sauce he's serving. So, sauce. yeah, it's sauce. <laughs> he's from Louisiana. He's definitely serving sauce. So. But um, anything you want to say before you? Happy to be here, man. <laughs> Happy to have you. So, <laughs> that's fun. Let's rub yeah. Tata Hannes. Yeah, everybody, rub Tata Hannes for good luck. Look, I'm just gonna motorboat your nose. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, we hope everybody has a good week. Uh, make it a good one. Even if Monday sucks, make sure Tuesday's great. Yeah. So we'll see y'all next weekend. Um, and. Anything else that we're missing? Uh, who that? Oh, who that? <laughs> You're now rocking with DJ. Who that? Who that? There's nothing wrong. It's gotta be my imagination. I think it's in the face. I think it's in the face. Yeah. I think it's in the face. It ain't nothing wrong. Let's go. Slip and slide, DJ.